how Helen hated sad funeral ceremonies. Well, of course, no one asked her permission to live or go beyond the border to a place from which no one could return. And now, as soon as she saw the inscription Julia, neighbor on the smartphone screen, her heart sank with an unpleasant feeling. Ah! Helen, hello, baby. It's on Julia who worries. Sorry to bring you bad news this morning, but your father's phone isn't answering. So I have to bring grief down on you. George died. I was going to work and saw him sitting in an apple tree. I look, he seems to be doing something. Half turning towards the street. Well, I waved to him and say, good morning. I asked what he was doing early in the morning, and George showed zero emotion to me, didn't even move. Although you know that my voice is loud, it's impossible not to hear. I went up to George, but he wasn't breathing. While I'm sitting here on the porch, I called all the necessary services, except for the ritual. It's not for me to decide how to see off George, but to be honest, I need to go to work. Would you come? Estedly responded in a hoarse voice. Of course, Aunt Julia, I'm leaving now. I'll be there in 30 minutes. The sad news that her paternal grandfather, the always cheerful and cheerful George, had overcome the last milestone came as a real shock to Helen. We have to go, of course, organize everything, call everyone from grandfather's phone book. However, I wanted to convince myself that this conversation with my neighbor about my grandfather was just a bad dream. Now all you need to do is open your eyelids wide and look at the call history on your smartphone and make sure that there was no call. Unfortunately, this hope was not justified and there really was a call from Aunt Valia. And the girl did everything possible to quickly get to her grandfather's house, located within the city, but in the so-called private sector. Having already got into the taxi car that had arrived on call, Helen asked her boss for a day off, then had a short conversation with her office colleague, explaining where the documents were, which, as luck would have it, the customers were supposed to come for today. The girl never dared to make the most difficult call. How to inform your father and mother, who have flown away on vacation to celebrate their 25th wedding anniversary, that they urgently need to return to say goodbye to Grandfather George. Helen became sad. How unexpectedly this tragedy happened. Just the day before yesterday, she called her grandfather. He said that he was waiting for a visit and asked him to come quickly. Not for the sake of caring for a small garden, but to talk on some issue to seek it. Helen promised to be there on the weekend that had recently flown by. She could have easily visited her grandfather, but she got a little sick, postponed the visit, called and apologized. They chatted for a bit about nothing. Grandfather George recalled the method that his wife Kristen and grandmother Helen always used. The girl listened that she needed to brew special herbs, wait until the infusion cooled to a pleasant warmth, stir a spoonful of honey in a glass of healing liquid, drink it, and lie down under the blanket. She promised that she would undergo intensive treatment and then visit him, and in the first month of autumn, when she had a vacation scheduled, the girl promised to stay with him for at least a week. Lord, how embarrassing. Now Helen was ashamed that she was going to wait for her vacation. After all, by public transport with transfers, you could get to grandfather in 45 minutes. When there were no traffic jams on the roads, you could even after work go not home, but to a loved one who had been incredibly bored alone for a little over a year. When over, it was uneasy that she was a free girl and could easily keep a lonely grandfather company. It would be quite possible to go to work and back by taxi. Of course, it would be more expensive than using public transport, but it would be quick and comfortable. Alternatively, you could simply leave the house a little earlier in order to walk to the transport stop from which the trom of the required route departs. Everything could absolutely be resolved, sorted out and sorted out somehow. But he didn't have the insight to understand that Grandpa George needed care and supervision. And his requests to come were not just the whim of a bored elderly man. Helen was tormented by a painful feeling of shame and sighing, she tried to call her parents. However, both mom and dad's numbers were out of network coverage. The girl had to send a letter by email, hoping that the unpleasant news would be read not too late. While solving troubles and questions, the time on the way to my grandfather's house flew by unnoticed. Helen got out of the taxi and listening to Aunt Valia's sympathetic remarks, felt real grief falling on her. The neighbor hugged the girl who arrived, asked her to hold on, and ran to work. Helen looked at her grandfather and kept expecting that now he would get up, stretch and invite her to a tea party in the house or in the gazebo entwined with grapes. However, no miracle happened services which arrived in response to a call from a neighbor 
began another whirlwind of sad affairs associated with the passing of the older generation. The lady doctor confirmed the death of my grandfather, presumably from a heart attack. She recommended funeral agencies to the girl and explained that there were specialists working there who could organize mourning procedures with the most due respect for the deceased and sympathy for his relatives. Helen listened to the advice and tried with all her might to hold back bitter tears of despair. Only by lunchtime the girl was left alone. Helen entered her grandfather's house and burst into tears when she saw the phone on the table, which he apparently forgot on his last earthly morning. Probably if he had a cell phone, he would be able to call somewhere and ask for help. But it was impossible to change the past. Everything turned out the way it did. The girl discovered the cash, which her grandfather George and grandmother Kristen told her about shortly after she came of age. The man then tilted the rug hanging over the bed, gently pressed on one of the wooden panels, then with a slight movement moved it to the side. The surprised girl saw a deep vertical niche. Grandfather explained. Here, granddaughter, Speta and I are slowly putting money here so that it won't be a burden to anyone. You'll bury us with this money. Helen remembered how she began to grumble at her grandparents. She said that it was too early for them to think about such a topic. She assured that they would still have the opportunity to babysit their great-grandchildren. No, my dear, that won't do. First, I will have to consider approve and then help raise the kids. Mom and Dad always have no time. Granny, patting her smiling granddaughter on the head, quietly objected. Helen, we're not asking you whether it's too early for us to think about our last journey in this world or not. Just showing you so you know, just in case. After all, George already has an anniversary this year, 70 years old, and I'm not much younger. Alas, at that age, anything can happen. Your parents, of course, also know about this hiding place. But you never know, maybe they'll be wary or start being modest. Grandfather George supported his wife. Now, we don't want to be a burden to you. So let's end the conversation. The grandmother hastened to change the topic and began to talk about the amusements of the selected kitten, simply nicknamed the man. Now, six years after this conversation, the skinny kid has turned into a well-fed, long and independent, handsome man. The owner's departure was a real shock for the animal, and he even lost his excellent appetite for several days. However, grandfather George managed to pull the cat out of this state, and now this mission fell to Helen. It seemed to the girl that the orphan cat understood everything, and that's why he curled up on his grandfather's bed and didn't even react to the sound of the refrigerator door opening. The agencies recommended by the our employee were indeed professional. A serious man suggested that Helen hold a farewell not at home, but in a special ritual hall at the cemetery. Getting there is much easier than here in the private sector, and even though the house is big, there will still be fuss, unnecessary fuss. The room there is convenient and comfortable. Everyone will be able to say goodbye calmly and without the crush that usually accompanies the removal of a body from an apartment or house. Everything will be both touching and civilized. Besides, understand, it will save you a lot of problems. The offer seemed reasonable to Helen, but she had to spend not only her meager savings, but also her grandfather's stash to pay for funeral services. The girl did everything that was necessary. As if being in a state of sleep, she kept waiting for her parents to arrive, or at least answer the email, but in vain. The girl contacted the hotel where they had booked a room. But, as we managed to understand from the answer in broken Russian, Mr. and Mrs. Hurd did not move in. They explained that they had decided to change plans a little. Helen was worried about her parents, but she couldn't do anything. Now clods of earth began to fall on the lid of Grandfather George's coffin, but neither his son nor his daughter-in-law appeared. Words of condolences and sympathy were received by Helen, who had to listen to the lamentations of distant relatives who came to see the old man off on his last journey. Some spoke bluntly about the thoughtless son and daughter-in-law, who did not appear at the mournful event. The girl defended her parents as best she could, and the guardians of other people's morality fell silent for a while, turning the conversation to other topics. Gradually, only relatives and closest neighbors remained at the funeral table, organized in a small cafe. Helen, who last saw most of them a little less than a year ago at farewell to Grandmother Sveta, could hardly endure all the questions. She wanted to run away from the cafe as soon as possible, but she had to fulfill her granddaughter's duty to the very end. From time to time, she herself, along with the waiters, took out dirty dishes and brought funeral treats, just so as not to sit at the table listening to the conversations of those gathered growing louder. Quite by chance, Helen, 
while serving another portion of pies, overheard part of the conversation between Aunt Valia and grandfather's cousin Stepan. George sometimes communicated with this apple tree like a person. I told him, even when Kristen was alive, that this useless tree needs to be cut down. It has long grown higher than the roof of the house, and apples cannot be easily obtained. Kristen, Kingdom of Heaven. She kept swearing that this tree was of little use. It would bear fruit for a year so that you were tired of growing the harvest. Then it wouldn't bear a single fruit. Everything was threatened to be cut down. Only George, blessed to his memory, always stood up to defend the apple tree, nodding, and Julia agreed with the interlocutor. What you say is true. George's passion for this old apple tree also seems strange to me. Well, if only the plot was about a hectare, then it would seem that the place wouldn't be a problem. But it's simply stupid to leave such a huge tree in such a small little snippet of conversation made Helen think. Indeed, in fact, Grandfather treated this apple tree as if it were a living person. The girl often saw him affectionately stroking the bark of a tree as he passed by. Once as a child, Helen, deciding to play, climbed onto a branch, which broke off under her. And Grandfather George, entrusting his granddaughter to the care of his wife, began to treat the wound of the tree himself, recently. After the death of Grandmother Kristen, my grandfather even preferred to relax alone under the crown of an apple tree, rather than in a specially built gazebo entwined with grapes. Thoughts from the mysterious apple tree that George had so highlighted briefly receded to sad worries. Christians that her relatives were the last to leave the rented hall, and Stepan reminded Helen, no, someone should definitely spend the night in George's house until 40. You won't be scared alone until your parents show up. Maybe send someone with you. At least take my Lena, my youngest daughter, with you. She has nothing to do at home anyway. Her husband is on a business trip. You can sit and chat. Looking at her, she saw the face of a woman who clearly had her own plans for the evening and completely lapped the desire to spend the night somewhere in an unfamiliar place. Helen hastened to refuse. But thank you, but I really can handle it myself. After all, it's like a sign of my respect for my grandfather. Having said goodbye to everyone, the girl hurried to the public transport stop since her relatives had to go in completely different directions. As soon as Helen opened the gate of her grandfather's house, she regretted that she had tried to create the image of an independent and strong person. Of course, she's not too young to be afraid of an empty house. But I've already spent several nights here completely alone, so he can handle it. She began to think again about the reason why the tree occupied such an important place in the life of her relative. Thoughtfully, the girl hand-fed the sad cat, but she felt somehow uneasy being in the house, even in the company of a cat. Helen went out into the yard and, obeying an impulse, approached a tree on which small green fruits were hanging high somewhere. A flock of goosebumps ran down her spine when the girl saw scratches on the ground. There was no doubt. Grandfather George left these marks. It became truly creepy when Helen had the crazy idea that the dying man was scratching the ground not in agony but trying to dig something up. The girl went to the barn, took a small garden trowel from there, and returning to the apple tree, began to carefully dig the ground. Almost immediately, the scoop hit something hard. Helen began to dig with the utmost care and soon pulled out from a shallow hole a solid rectangular package wrapped in a bag and additionally wrapped with tape. Helen had never heard any stories about family heirlooms and was truly shocked. At home, Helen laid an old towel on the table which had long been asking for a well-deserved rest somewhere in the trash, put her find on it and carefully opened the package with a kitchen knife, which Grandfather always kept sharp. Under the layers of tape in the bag was a metal candy box. The girl, holding her breath, opened it and saw inside not jewelry or money but papers under the folded notebook leaves, clearly covered with Grandmother's even handwriting. There were envelopes. Judging by the fact that the package was quite modern, with the emblem of a chain supermarket, and the paper was neither damp nor yellowed, Helen concluded that the find had not lain in the ground for very long, thinking that nothing bad would happen if she found out what her grandfather was trying to get before his death. Helen began to study the find. It was clearly written by my grandmother, my dear George. I'm writing you a note, realizing that I have very little time left in this world and I don't think I have the right to take this secret with me. Forgive me, George, for many years ago, because of love for you, I committed deception and even a crime. It's hard to admit, but it's necessary. You and I were already married then. They sent my daughter to kindergarten, and I returned to work at the post office. Everything was fine with us, 
so I envied myself. And then I saw a letter addressed to you. The sender was a certain woman. My heart immediately felt bad. I didn't give you the letter. I secretly read it myself. That's how I found out about your novel. Your sweetheart reported that it was her strict father who arranged your separation back in 1964. He threatened to kill you or put you in jail using his connections. In fact, he left her the only way to tell you, looking into your eyes, that he doesn't love you at all and doesn't want to see you ever again. The mother tried to stand up for her daughter, but it did not help. The woman was simply beaten by her own husband because she dared to say a word in defiance. I looked at what your father had done and was terribly afraid for you. That's why she said convincingly everything she was told. After this cruel confession, you predictably flared up, packed your things, took an apple tree seedling as a souvenir for your parents and returned. Blake, sons of a woman in the letter reported that she was pregnant with your child and to cover up her sin, she was married off without an official signature to some widower with numerous children in a remote settlement that didn't even have a name. I read the letter in the dark, wet with tears, and even began to sympathize with your young beloved. She complained that her family life did not work out. The man with whom she had to live perceived her as a servant, but despite the scandals with relatives, Alina named the girl she was born your daughter in honor of her mother Sophie. The unfortunate young mother found herself literally in slavery. She endured beatings, humiliation, and tirelessly planned her escape. When my daughter began to grow up, Alien became even heavier. The native children of this so-called husband began to mock the girl, and her mother could not say a word in defense. Most the beatings began immediately. Only five years later, Alien still managed to escape from her husband. She did not give details, but because even the letters at this point were blurred from tears spilled on the paper, it was clear it was very difficult. Alien asked that you come to these very settlements for her and her daughter. She wrote that she would be waiting for you. When I read the letter, it was as if I had gone blind and deaf at the same time. I really didn't understand how I should continue to live. Giving you the messages meant losing my family, and our son was only three years old. How could I deprive his father with my own hands? How would he grow up without you? I repent. That first letter, I then destroyed it and threw it in the oven. I thought I protected my family. I shouldn't have hoped. Alien continued to send letters. The next one came almost a year later. Apparently, she planned for you to receive news from her and your daughter on your birthday. She asked why you don't answer her. How scared I was then that she would get ready and come to you. The distance is not particularly long, maybe a little more than 300 kilometers or something like that. It turns out that almost next door to us live those who are capable of destroying my life. If I can burn the letters, then the problem with Sophie is more complicated. What am I supposed to do with a woman and child? I started thinking about how I could prevent them from coming to you. I wrote a letter copying your handwriting on your behalf just in case. I promised that I would come as soon as I could. You probably don't even remember how I tried to persuade you to move, but you never agreed. So I lived like on a volcano. I didn't know how to protect my happiness, how to preserve it if you found out the truth about yours. At work, I also didn't take any vacation or sick leave because of this. Then you realized, five years later, that only once a year does this woman bother you. I felt a little better. I burned the letters for a long time, several years, and then I felt ashamed. I started hiding them. I knew that there were places in the house that you would never think of getting into. The only thing is, because of my own fears, I couldn't leave my post office and refuse the more promising position. Well, it's okay, I'm used to it. How long did she write to you? But I only saved 10 messages with the last letter that arrived in 1994, and I acted completely meanly, and that she wrote that her health had become completely bad and that she needed medication. And although Sophie tries to support her, there's always not enough money. It's clear. It was such a time then, the whole country was in a fever. She didn't ask for anything for herself. But, of course, I couldn't completely calm down. What if the difficult one brings her to our region? What if she decides to see you? I carefully printed this envelope and returned it with the note the addressee has left. After that, the stream of letters from Alien completely dried up. Why should I have done this before? And I don't understand it myself. There wouldn't be a problem in the first place. And now I don't know what to do with the letters. By right and conscience, you should read them, but not during my lifetime. So, when you find out the bitter story of Ali and your daughter, I will no longer be there. Sorry for being selfish, but I couldn't do otherwise. 
She loved you too much and didn't want to leave her son without a father. Now I don't care anymore. Gina has also grown up a long time ago, and his granddaughter is a bride. So the path to alien is clear. I only ask you one thing. Wait at least a year after I leave before looking for your first love and daughter, whom you have never seen. Maintain this period of mourning in honor of all the good things that happened between us. And then, do as your heart tells you. Forgive me for everything. Loving you, Kristen. Helen was shocked when she read the note. The story of tragic love, many years of deception, and difficult confession involuntarily touched her. The girl thought that, probably, Kristen's grandmother should have kept her secret forever. On the other hand, she understood that this was too cowardly. Of course, it's easier to judge from the outside than to find yourself in such a stalemate. And Helen couldn't imagine what she would have done in her grandmother's place. Would you immediately tell your legal husband that his friend still loves him and is waiting for him? together with their common daughter, or would you try by any means within your imagination to protect him from this literally stunning information? It became clear to Helen what Grandpa George wanted to talk to her about. Surely, since the one-year reprieve that Grandmother Kristen asked him for was coming to an end, he wanted to get advice on how to find his old lover. After all, a lot of time has passed, and it is possible that this alien has long since changed the common surname Smith. Her daughter, Helen's blood sister and her father's daughter, could also probably be married. Trying to distract myself from the unexpected information received, Helen put the papers back into the box, put it in the closet, and began reading the letters that Alien had sent to her grandfather. You never know what other details of the personal life of a loved one will be revealed. So alone, except for the cat, she fell into a light sleep. It was boring, and Helen started cleaning although there was no particular need for this. The girl took out a bucket of dirty water to throw it into the far corner of the site and saw a car drive up to the gate. Helen's parents, who had finally returned from abroad, got out of the car and she was incredibly happy. Even though this meeting was tinged with bitterness, at least the worry for the parents receded from the heart. During the confused conversation, it turned out that they had arrived in a place where there was no connection or access to the internet. Michael and Anne, having reached civilization, received a sad message from their daughter just before the funeral of Grandfather George and hurried to return, but were still late. Helen was glad that she now had the support she needed so much. After hugs and tears, when everyone was already sitting at the table, the girl began to tell her dad and mom about the unusual find. To prove her words, the girl took out a box from the closet person together with her parents. She once again read aloud Grandma Kristen's handwritten confession and then they studied the surviving letters. One of them contained a photo from a photo studio. It depicted two pretty girls, and there was clearly a kinship in the appearance of the beauties. But they looked more like sisters with a not very big age difference. However, the inscription on the back of the photograph indicated that this was the first love of Grandfather George and their common daughter, Sophie. In beautiful handwriting, it was written, in memory of my beloved George from Alien and Sophie on her 16th birthday. We look forward to meeting you. 1981. Michael, forgetting about his respectability, even whistled, yes. To say that I'm surprised is to say nothing at all. How did mom manage to keep all this a secret for so many years and not give away her knowledge? I can't even imagine. Anne, who had a wonderful relationship with her calm mother-in-law, contrary to all stereotypes and ideas about the peculiarities of the family way of life, was also perplexed. They had so many heart to heart conversations, but Kristen never said a word that somewhere far away her official husband had a beloved and illegitimate daughter. It was not easy to come to terms with such news. Anne asked, do you think we should find your sister and her mother, if she's still alive, of course, or let everything remain as it is? The man himself did not know how to react to what was happening. Judging by what he learned from his daughter, the father wanted the secret of his youth to be known. On the other hand, is it ethical now to intrude into the fate of a stranger, but a woman related by blood? She appears to be about 50 years old now, and this same alien is most likely now approaching 70. A reminder of her difficult youth and the man she once loved so much but never got to see could be harmful to her health. In addition, as Kristen's grandmother wrote, after she sent back the letter mark the address he has dropped out, they stopped coming at all. This could mean that Alien believed the lie or that she was desperate. However, alas, the most unfavorable events in the fate of the woman and her daughter could have happened, Burn said, 
as if voicing her thoughts out loud. But still, it seems to me that we should at least try to find my grandfather's daughter just to somehow rehabilitate him. After all, it's not Grandpa George's fault that everything turned out this way. I think it would be fair if the whole truth became known to Alien, and of course, Sophie. Listen, Dad, hmm. The girl turned to Michael, hmm. How do you feel knowing that you have an older blood sister? Do you want to see her and chat? The man was confused and asked his daughter in response. And you, Helen, this is Sophie. Actually, Auntie, that's what you have to do. It turns out that it's interesting to meet her. Helen listened to herself and admitted, curious and a little scary, her opinions in the family were divided. Anne, after listening to her husband and daughter, said, It seems to me that we should leave everything as it is. There is no need now to disturb something that has long been forgotten. More than half a century has passed. Maybe this alien is happy with another person. And hello, meet, so to speak, relatives. I think this is not entirely correct. A long conversation did not help find a compromise. In addition, all family members themselves were not sure of the correctness of their thoughts. As a result, the father went to bed in order to visit the place of George's final resting place in the morning. Sorry, Dad, I'm late, Michael whispered, standing by a fresh mound covered with reeds. I never could have imagined that we wouldn't see each other again. The man put four scarlet carnations on the empty space and bowed his head, hiding his tears. After Michael, flowers were laid on George's grave by his daughter-in-law and granddaughter. Each of the grieving relatives realized that they were subconsciously waiting for a sign on how to deal with the information that had fallen on them. They didn't talk about it out loud, but Michael, Anne, and Helen were waiting for a revelation to descend on them. Perhaps it was naive and stupid, but I would really like to know what George himself wanted. No matter how much they hoped for a clue, they could not get it, and with a heavy heart they returned to the apartment. We decided that Michael would live in the house for now, and that his wife and daughter would come to him in their free time, while Anne helped her husband pack at least the minimum necessary things. Helen hurried to the nearest store to buy some special food that was tastier for the yearning cat. The girl felt very sorry for the cat, who seemed to have suddenly lost his luster and lost his previously excellent appetite. After consulting with a serious-looking woman, who was busily putting bags of wet food into the cart, Helen collected some gifts for her grandfather's pet and returned home, handing her dad a bag of food, and my dear old ask. He is now a little capricious and may refuse food. Try to feed him from the palm of your hand. He usually starts eating as a sign of respect. Brian Tu Xiang Tu has smiled at his daughter. No, don't worry. I won't offend the tailed one. The days flew by. Just keep up with them. Helen, her mother, went to work, and in the evenings they talked about everything, as the girls were accustomed to from early childhood. Of course, they also talked about the secret that Grandma Kristen had been hiding for so we decided to gather our relatives. We sat together mentally, remembering various incidents from the past. Michael carefully tried to beg it from his great uncle. Steppen, can you tell us anything about Dad's youth? The older man was happy to talk. George was always brave for any good cause, responsive and decisive. When he returned from the army, he went to the factory to get a job in there, in the personnel department. As his mother later said, he heard from someone that young people from our city were sent to build villages and do household work. It was no longer a new thing then. Everyone in the country wanted to help. The people acted in unison. So George, after returning from military service, decided that he would be more useful there. I admit, I also wanted to go with him, but where should I go? In total, at that time, I was 15 years old. George is five years older than me. In general, he went far. Fortunately, in the Army, he learned to drive a truck and received a license. He returned almost five years later. I brought saplings, as if as a souvenir of my long business trip. Of course, he has changed during this time. A naive boy left, but an almost grown man returned. Not because I'm related, but to be fair, I'll say that George definitely hasn't become any worse. I think she can find such Sophie now. His hands are golden and his character is worthy. When here at the automobile plant, they accepted him with open arms. Teetotal, hardworking, honest. What more could you ask for? Hungry for work. And so, he will take off his last shirt and give it to someone else. Oh, and the men respected him. No matter what, he never refused. Well, women generally died for him, and he treated everyone very respectfully. Then, he married Kristen. 
She worked at the post office, and somehow the company car broke down, and George was driving by and couldn't leave his fellow driver in trouble. That's how we met. We met briefly and signed, and see my mother was even offended. It seemed like the holiday was squeezed. But since you, Gina, were born, George was happy. Here in the yard, relatives, neighbors, and colleagues staged a big party. Everyone was invited. It seemed like there weren't any delicacies on the table, but come on, that's not the main thing. It turns out that the atmosphere is much more important. Yes, there was a time when all the neighbors lived almost like relatives. Stefan Alexandrovich interrupted his memories to quench his thirst with a cool, tasty compote. And although he didn't manage to learn anything new that his son didn't know, it was still nice to hear kind words addressed to George. After only Michael, Anne, and Helen remained in the house, the female part of the family cleaned up, leaving the only man, apart from the cat, to dismantle the makeshift benches. Buried Helen went to bed on her favorite cot, and she had a strange, incredibly realistic dream. The girl was not even afraid when she saw Grandfather George at his favorite apple tree. The man stood under the tree, gently stroking the bark and looking at his granddaughter, asking, When the apples ripen, take a few and give them to those you know. Don't forget, Helen. Please don't forget. Grandfather George looked somewhere, relations of just trying to see what was happening behind his granddaughter's shoulder. Helen turned to see what or who interested the man, but it was empty. When the girl's gaze returned to the apple tree, Grandfather was no longer under the canopy. Outside the window, birds whistled and sang, tearing Helen out of the captivity of sleep, which left behind a vivid impression. There were no doubts left. Grandfather George conveyed the news, the very sign that was so missing to make the right decision. Of course, he made his desire clear. At his request, Chris and Helen must go on a trip in the fall so that her grandfather's longtime beloved and their common daughter will find out the whole truth. Shocked Helen did not hide from her parents that she saw Grandfather George in a dream. Michael was even a little annoyed that the late father in his dreams visited not him, but his granddaughter. But wise Anne supported both her husband and daughter, so it was necessary. There, beyond reality, there are probably its own rules. In anticipation of the holiday, the whole family began preparing for Helen's upcoming trip. The girl's attempts to find Enya and Sophie on social networks were unsuccessful, although she patiently looked through hundreds of pages of users from various regions, and not just from that area. Helen planned to hit the road on the first day of her vacation, so as not to delay the resolution of the issue, which had already been postponed for many years by the will of Kristen's grandmother. The girl's parents, trying not to show their excitement, helped their daughter get ready. They reacted most responsibly to the upcoming transportation of apples, which grandfather ordered to take with and placed a rectangular basket without a handle in a rather compact but roomy sports bag. She carefully placed the ripe fruits there, laying each layer with parchment paper on her husband's advice, and the main load, carefully covered with a towel, was packed. Helen added the minimum amount of things to her bag and hit the road, at the girl's request, her parents only accompanied her to the taxi, and although the daughter promised to call and report the results of the search, Anne and Michael were worried about their daughter. It is not at all a fact that the search expedition will be successful, and a meeting with a woman from George Ilyich's past could lead to completely unpredictable results. Thanks to a carefully thought-out route and the absence of any unforeseen circumstances, Helen easily reached the village from where Grandfather George had been receiving letters for so long, some of which he was able to read only after his wife's death. The local villages seemed to the girl to be quite a cozy settlement. The coming autumn had already touched the trees with gold and made the village especially picturesque. Private houses coexisted peacefully with apartment buildings, near which in some places there were small vegetable gardens and even greenhouses. The girl approached the house the address of which was indicated on the envelope. An intercom was installed on the entrance door of a typical five-story building, and Helen froze for a few seconds in indecision. She, although she was preparing mentally for the trip and even diligently prepared a short speech before the difficult explanation, suddenly became scared. Having overcome herself, Helen typed the number of the apartment she was interested in on the keyboard. Hearing a pleasant female voice from the speakers of the device, the girl asked, May he shuck it. Hello, excuse me, please. Can I talk to Alien and her daughter Sophie? Come in. E. It came from the speaker, and the door opened. Helen was very surprised that the stranger, whose voice sounded from the speakers, did not ask her either her name or the purpose of meeting her. 
but there was no time to think, leaving deeply to calm down. The girl went up to the second floor she needed, where a not-quite-old woman was already waiting for her behind the open door. Helen peered into her face, but in vain. I tried to recognize the stranger Sophie, how, given the fact that in the photograph she was captured at the height of her young 16 years and more than three decades had passed, it was unlikely that such drastic changes could have occurred. Outwardly, the woman was of a completely different type, and she looked at most about 40 years old, maybe a little bit older. Is it possible to accurately determine age by the appearance of modern women who take care of themselves, to which the stranger undoubtedly belonged? Helen greeted warmly. Hello again. I was the one who bothered you. Tell me, please, how can I talk to Alien and Sophie? The woman conducted the conversation freely, even in a brotherly way, as if she had known Helen for many years. Mm. Hello, hello, if you're not joking. From what regions did you come? The question surprised Helen. But she answered honestly, although she did not understand why it mattered. The woman, hearing the name of the city, softened and invited her to enter the apartment, where she asked another strange question. What are your grandfather's last names? My grandfather's last name on my father's side is Johnson, and on my mother's side, Adrian. The uttered phrase had a strange effect on the woman. She didn't ask any more questions. She began to fuss. Despite Helen's excuses, she led her into the kitchen through her plate of delicious rosy pies. She offered tea, coffee, homemade compote, and holding out a glass of sweet drink to the guests. Ex my mom's best friend was Sophie. She was like a caring nanny and an older sister to me. They survived together even when there was nothing special to eat except potatoes grown in a vacant lot. Meat was seen in occasionally. An alien that she was planting was so worried and afraid and she hoped that one day they would look for her. I firmly told my mother not to tell anyone how to find her and her daughter. Except for the man with the last name Johnson or his descendants, she was deeply in love with a certain George Johnson. The daughter is the fruit of their sinful and sweet love. Yes, that's right, George Johnson, my grandfather. Helen confirmed her comment. He passed away recently. Only after this did it become clear that his first love and their common daughter once lived here in your apartment at this very address it's not Grandpa George's fault that he didn't find them earlier. This is how the circumstances developed. The landlady took a notebook from the closet, tore out a piece of paper, took a pen and flipped through the pages. I began to rewrite something, not forgetting to show cordiality. You eat, drink. Perhaps you rushed here straight from the station. Refresh yourself. Otherwise, in order to meet Alien or Daughter to meet again on the road, you will have to go to another city. They moved. We had to, although it was incredibly difficult for us to part. They became almost family. But after Aunt Alien encountered an acquaintance of the man who kept her as a slave, she was afraid to stay here. It's easier to get lost in a big city. Here you go. I texted you their address and Sophie's phone number to arrange a meeting. Knowing Aunt Alien, I am sure that she is still waiting for news about her beloved. But it's better if you and Sophie discuss the time and place of the meeting. Things aren't going well in their house. My daughter got an extremely nasty husband. When I saw him for the first time, can you imagine? I was even scared. It seems like a person is standing, smiling at you, and his eyes are contemptuous and angry. As my aunt later told me, he helped my daughter a lot in some way when she got a new job in the city, and she fell in love without noticing any of his shortcomings. When I saw it, it was too late. Like a fly caught in a web. No matter how hard his aunt tries to get him away from his daughter, it just doesn't work. Lessons the woman fell silent. Apparently, she herself was worried about this situation. But she did not know how to help the woman whom she considered practically her sister. Helen tried not to look like she was from a hungry region. But she was also unable to refuse the tasty treat and belatedly remembered the rules of etiquette. Sorry, I forgot to introduce myself, Helen. My name is. Thank you very much. Your pies are very tasty and the compote is simply wonderful. The woman was very cutely embarrassed. Me, come on. It's me who attacked with interrogation. My name is Alice. By the way, an alien taught me to cook. She is generally a master at cooking. Listen, Helen, do you have money for the trip? A taxi will cost more, but it will be faster than taking a train. Sorry, it's not much, but I can give you $50. Helen was deeply shocked by this proposal. Some Alice seems to be a completely modern young woman in her simple-minded and open behavior like good characters from old films that grandparents love to watch. Such a friendly attitude brought tears to Helen's eyes, 
and she hastened to calm Alice down. Don't worry, my finances are fine. Thank you, Alice. I'm very glad to meet you. Thank you for the treat. It's time to move on. Helen looked at the cost of a taxi to her destination in the app and sighed. Yes, you're right. The price tag is something incredible. It doesn't matter. I'd love to take a ride on the train. Alice didn't let her guests go so easily. Night. Now we'll look at the schedule of electric trains and passing trains on the internet. Maybe we'll even book a ticket right away. Why are you toiling around in the waiting room in vain? It's better to keep me company here. It's true. Helen nodded, agreeing with Alice's wisdom. But the precaution turned out to be unnecessary. It turned out that given the time it takes to get to the station, you almost have to say goodbye to the hospitable woman. Almost leaving the apartment, Helen hesitated for a while. Opening the bag, she took out several large fragrant apples and handed them to Alice. Here, these are apples from my grandfather's orchard. They are very tasty. I don't know how else to thank you for such a warm welcome. Alice was embarrassed again, but accepted the apples. I can't resist such an incredible aroma and beauty. They are just like the picture. Say hi to Sophie. By the way, I'll probably, with your permission, warn her that you're going to see them. Let her somehow prepare an Oya. Otherwise, you never know. The blood pressure will jump, the heart will catch, or something else. Helen had no objections, and having said a warm goodbye to her new friend, the girl went to the station. Already with the sound of wheels, she sent her parents a detailed story about how the responsive Alice greeted her. She said that Alien and Sophie had moved, but she had their new address. The mother, who was clearly worried about her daughter, responded almost instantly and asked her to be careful on the road. The girl with a light heart promised to look around carefully and not get involved in any dubious adventures. Fortunately, the situation in the carriage was quite calm. Someone peered thoughtfully at the landscape outside the window, becoming less and less visible due to the approaching darkness. Some of the random fellow passengers were dozing, and Helen regretted that she could not, like most passengers in the carriage, immerse herself in communication with a smartphone. The charge level forced me to refrain from this luxury. Almost at the moment, when the previous day crossed the border of night to remain forever in the past, Helen found herself in an ancient town standing on the... The girl thought with belated regret that she had not thought to book a hotel room in advance, because showing up at a stranger's apartment at such a late time was somehow completely awkward. The girl felt a little uneasy, but ordering herself not to be a coward, she quickly figured out how to get to the nearest hotel before her smartphone was completely discharged. Luck was with Helen. The administrator, smiling, even seemed to sincerely offer a small but in her words, a very cozy room. Soon Helen settled into her temporary housing and, having put her smartphone on charge, took a shower, had dinner, and lay down on the... Although it was late, the mattress was comfortable, no loud sounds penetrated the hotel room, and there was no sleep in either eye. Still, there is a meeting in the morning, for which she went on a trip, and the anxiety appeared again. The girl was thinking for the 100th time about what to say to the innocent victim of deception and how to apologize for her grandmother, and in general, in what style to conduct the conversation. After all, if, with the good-natured Alice, everything somehow turned out very naturally, this does not mean that communication with Ale and Sophie will be just as pleasant. Although she managed to fall asleep only in the morning, Helen woke up a few minutes before the alarm clock. Thanks to the girl's youth, the anxious night did not leave any noticeable marks on her appearance, and at 10, um, she decided to call Sophie. The woman answered almost instantly. It seemed as if she was expecting this call. It is quite likely that this was the case. After all, it's not very often that there are such meetings of relatives who had no idea about each other. Having quickly agreed to meet in one of the cafes located near the hotel, Sophie was the first to end the conversation. Surprisingly, the choice of a neutral public place for the meeting finally calmed Helen, for whom her recent acquaintance with Alice made the most pleasant an even encouraging impression. Well, such a sweet, kind woman simply cannot be friends and consider bad Sophie her family. This means that they are at least quite adequate. In addition, in a cafe surrounded by Sophie, she is unlikely to reach a violent expression of emotions, and there is less risk that Alien will get too nervous. The girl transferred the basket of apples into a spacious shopping bag, which she had prudently taken with her, and went to the meeting. As Helen approached the cafe, she noticed a slender woman on the porch of the establishment. 
in whose features it was quite possible to see the girl from the photograph from the letter. The girl was the first to say hello and introduce herself. Say hey, hello, Sophie. I'm Helen Johnson. It turns out that my grandfather is your dad, the woman smiled. Very nice. I tell you quite sincerely, Alice told me that she had wonderful impressions of communication, and her opinion, as life has shown, must be trusted. But let's go. I'll introduce you to Mom, and we'll talk calmly. She's waiting for us inside. The acquaintance procedure turned out to be unusually calm. Alien behaved affably, but with poorly concealed interest, peering into the face of the granddaughter of her beloved man. To somehow break the prolonged silence, Helen handed the woman a berry. Here, these are apples from your grandfather's orchard. Alien looked up from studying her face and, looking inside the bag, gasped, No. The woman carefully took out one fruit, looking at it, holding it tenderly, as if the apple were a living creature. And, without addressing either Helen or her daughter, she spoke quietly. It was noticeable that she wanted to express all the accumulated pain. George and I once dreamed that we would live in a house near which an apple tree would definitely grow. Not just like a fruit tree, but also seemingly in honor of me. What a pity that our dreams did not come true. When we met, I was only 15 years old. However, in my native land, all girls grow up early, mature for family life with a loved one. George was nine years older. This age difference did not bother me at all. I deceived him. She said that they were already adults, and he couldn't even think that I was lying. We loved each other, forgetting about everything in the world. Probably as punishment for my lies and this sin, higher powers forced me to pay. Moreover, this terrible punishment also affects my daughter. The woman stroked the hand of her daughter sitting next to her, who blushed like boiled crayfish and fell silent. Ellen, listening and without interrupting, it's not at all that higher powers intervened in your life. Everything is much simpler and more offensive. Grandfather George, I received some of your letters only after the death of my wife, my grandmother. Helen told in detail everything she knew, and, not forgetting to mention her strange dream. Someday, mate, so I came here so that you know everything. Both my parents and I thought it would be fair. I am very sorry that your love had such a tragic story. But now nothing can be fixed. Leon held an apple in one hand, pressing it to her heart with her palm and with the other she wiped away the tears that stubbornly rolled down her cheeks. Neither Sophie nor Helen knew what to say or how to calm the woman in this grief. The silence was like an unspoken minute of silence over George's death. They haven't ordered drinks or food yet. Alien, as if waking up from a day, suggest, My dears, maybe we can walk along the street. I'm missing some air. Helen and Sophie agreed without hesitation, although the waiter, who did not wait for the order or at least a tip, simply looked unhappy. Nobody cared about him. Three representatives of the fair sex reflected on the vicissitudes of fate and how outside interference destroys the most wonderful dreams. My daughter wanted to take the bag of apples, but Alien stopped her. I'm sorry, but I don't want to part with these apples. Fortunately, the long handles made it possible to hang the bag on your shoulder, so it wasn't too heavy to carry. Alien asked Helen to tell everything she knew about her grandfather. What kind of work he did, what programs he liked to watch, what he liked to eat, and other everyday little things. The woman seemed to absorb the moments that had passed her by and smiled quietly. Perhaps she imagined that she herself had lived next to him all these years. The almost idyllic walk was interrupted by the ringtone of Sophie's mobile phone. The man who called shouted so loudly that even at a distance of the alley, Helen heard everything he said. No, why the hell aren't you at home or at work? I was in a hurry on purpose, driving like crazy. And everything is like in a bad joke. Where are you going? Look, if I find out that you're cheating on me, I'll kill everyone, and you and your mother will fly out of my apartment like little kids. Stately Sophie, listening to the tirade, seemed to become smaller in stature. The lights in her eyes went out, and she answered briefly. I'll be there now. Alien became noticeably agitated. It seems that the voice of the man who called was well known to her and this man did not evoke the slightest positive emotions in her. Sophie began to say goodbye to Helen and then turned to her mother. Listen, I'll run. Boris seems to be on edge already and you can talk some more. You probably would like to talk about a lot of things. Percy hurried to leave and from that moment, the casual conversation seemed to evaporate. The girl understood. The woman was terribly afraid for her daughter, who, as it was easy to understand, was in a relationship with a real tyrant. 
Soon Alien confirmed the guess of her young companion. I have the impression that my bitter story of slavery and the power of a cruel, domineering man is now being continued by my daughter. She, however, got married, unlike me, quite officially, and even out of great love. That's how it seemed at least 15 years ago. I was so happy for my daughter. Boris always treated me, and even more so her, with respect. But as soon as he managed to persuade me to add my savings to a shared apartment, the relationship began to deteriorate instantly, gradually. One thing didn't suit him, then another. While I was huddled separately in a rented room separate from my daughter and son-in-law, I had no idea how everything really was. Then, five years ago, I became seriously ill and went on long sick leave. In general, I had to ask Boris to come to their two-room apartment. It seems that I felt that I had the moral right to do this, but, of course, I felt uneasy. Nothing. She hid her pride somewhere far away and asked to stay with her daughter and Boris. Then I saw that not everything was fine with them. There are always some complaints against my daughter, jealousy, hurtful words. In a milder version than before, the monster oppressed me, but every reproach against Sophie was a punishment for me. Recently, he began to accuse me of infertility, although he himself always repeated that children were not included in his life plans. I get the impression that he is provoking Sophie to divorce, and then when we exchange the apartment, we will get some kind of closet. I now clearly understand that Boris will share everything thoroughly down to every spoon, and that she and I are like two blades of grass that can be broken like spitting. I have no legal education. Sophie is also far from this. We cannot afford a good lawyer financially. Helen did not know how to console the unhappy woman who had never in her life been able to lean on a reliable man's shoulder. Instead of rushing into battle with all the troubles yourself, it seems that friendship with Alice's mother is the only bright spot in her life, even if it was not easy. But when no one tries to solve the problems, it is at least morally easier. As soon as I lost my permanent job and started baking at home, the fragile balance collapsed. Somehow everything went downhill, although the standard of living even seemed to become higher. I can probably pay for my rented apartment again. But here's the irony of fate. I simply began to fear for my daughter's health. How afraid I am that Boris will start raising his hand against Sophie. And now there's something uneasy in my heart, as if some kind of trouble is approaching. Helen, I don't want to involve you in our family squabbles, but come to us, please. With you, Boris should moderate his ambition. He always does this in the presence of strangers, enthusiastically and even selflessly. Plays the role of an exemplary husband. If you ask our neighbors, everyone will probably unanimously say that my Sophie is incredibly lucky to have him. Helen immediately agreed to join us. Soon, after traveling a few bus stops and walking a little along the street, they found themselves inside the apartment. A muffled male voice was heard from one of the rooms. Now I'll teach you how to greet your husband, because in such fools as you, you need to put the thought into not wagging your tail in the absence of your legal spouse. Alien opened the door and saw Boris grab Sophie by the neck, lifting her off the floor. In a state of some kind of irrational anger, the woman took the bag of apples from her shoulder and hit her son-in-law on the head with it. The man, having let go of his victim, as if knocked down, collapsed on the floor, raised from coughing. Grace. Mom, what are you doing? What fly bit you? What if you broke Boria's skull? Glenn slowly walked up to the sofa, sat down on it, and asked, Sophie, nothing will happen to Boris. Better bring me some water with a sedative. My heart is starting to pound. Helen, meanwhile, looked closely at the man. He was clearly not too stunned and was already trying to get up. He looked dumbfounded. Boris was in no hurry to get up, and rubbing the back of his head, angrily collapsed on Alien and began to threat. Don't even think that this will be in vain. I'll go and film the beatings at the emergency room and put you, the senile old woman, behind bars. Sophie's hand shook as she handed the cup of medicine to her mother. The woman began to persuade Boris not to get excited, but he only became more unruly and uttered threats. You'll go and eat gruel until you die, and then you'll die in a government house. And with your health, there's no point in being there. Unexpectedly, Boris's tirade was interrupted by Helen who unwillingly, along with her grandfather and father, watched a variety of detective series and had, albeit small, but valuable experience in calming down even the most inappropriate office visitors and presumptuous suppliers. First of all, I'll call the police here right now. I saw with my own eyes how you tried to harm Sophie. So Alien's actions may well qualify as causing grievous bodily harm and self-defense. 
but you may have much more serious problems. Believe me, Helen herself could not understand how she had the audacity to tell an adult man some numbers of articles of the criminal code emerging from the depths of the subconscious. Stress probably took its toll. She used some legal terms so boldly that Boris, under the furious pressure of the stranger, noticeably became shy, and then, carefully getting up, left the room, saying to his wife, You're lucky that I have a strong head, otherwise I would have become a widow. When the man left, Helen sat down on the sofa next to Alien. The woman began to apologize to the guest, nay, sorry Helen that this happened, Low inside the girl was still shaking with anger. She managed to answer almost calmly. There's nothing to apologize for at all. Sophie, standing near the wall, listened to what was happening in the kitchen, where Boris had gone, and then she rushed there, surprising her mother and Helen. The man was busy climbing through the cabinets in a fit of rage. He threw everything out of them right onto the floor, Byatley called out to her son-in-law. Boris, calm down. I hid my stash a long time ago. As soon as I noticed that the bills began to gradually disappear from there, you won't find anything in the kitchen, don't hope. The man, not knowing where he was stepping, crushed cereals and pasta, left the kitchen, almost knocked down Sophie who was in his way and soon slammed the door loudly. Lee and Sophie began to clean up the consequences of the destruction caused by Boris, and Helen, without thinking for long, joined them. In response to the hostess's objections, the girl admitted, Partly I feel a little guilty for everything that happened, so of course I won't stand aside. The mess in the kitchen was almost eliminated when Boris appeared in the doorway, accompanied by a man in a police uniform. Nah, hello. Boris invited me to look into the circumstances of the beating. Gullion sank into a chair, exhausted. Sophie looked angrily at her husband, who, on the contrary, was jubilant. While the women were cleaning up, he made a fuss and literally dragged a law enforcement officer into the apartment, greatly exaggerating the scale of the conflict. Naturally, without telling you that before the ill-fated blow to the back of the head, he almost sent his wife to the next world. Helen was amazed at Boris's impudence and blurted out to eliminate the possibility of a dirty trick from this man with a rotten and petty soul. Excuse me, can I see your ID? The lieutenant presented the documents and began the interview. While Elena began to talk about what happened, Helen asked permission to call. The policeman did not interfere, and the girl hurried to dial her father's number. Michael listened to his daughter without interrupting, and then said, In general, Victor will call you back now. He is well-versed in such matters. You put the phone on speakerphone, and I think he will be able to resolve this situation favorably and without unnecessary hassle. Helen's father was not mistaken. Boris's triumphant appearance melted as, during a telephone conversation, the policeman, seeing red prints on Sophie's neck, began to cast disapproving glances at the impudent man. The lawyer insisted that the lieutenant also accept a statement from the woman who had been attacked by her husband. And this speech had a wonderful effect. After the mutually amiable completion of telephone conversations, the man sternly asked Boris, Are you still saying that your wife's mother hit you with a heavy bag for no reason at all? The picture of this incident is completely different. You, Boris, practically made a false call and even lied. This case, unfortunately, is not subject to jurisdiction, but it is quite possible to run into a fine. Now I will write everything down as it happened and warn you right away. You don't need to deceive me anymore. When Alien showed her terrible remedy, which she applied to her son-in-law, the policeman could hardly contain his smile and involuntarily admired the large elegant apples. Boris, having read and signed the document drawn up, showered curses and abuse on his wife, her mother and their young intercessor who had come from nowhere. The district police officer reprimanded the man, and he left the apartment in a rage. The policeman, turning to Sophie, said, I will advise you simply as a human being. Do not tolerate such an attitude. Further, as experience shows, similar marriages do not lead to anything good. It's not too late to get a divorce. Sophie thanked the district police officer. May. Thank you for your informal approach. We handled the situation fairly. Alien put almost half of the apples Helen had brought in a bag to the district police officer and handed it over with the words. Please accept it as a token of gratitude. I am very embarrassed that my intemperance caused my son-in-law to disturb you. The district police officer shrugged his shoulders saying that's the job. And then, as if having thrown off the plaque, he formally asked with admiration in his voice, how did you manage to grow such beautiful apples? At my parents' dacha this year, 
Almost the entire harvest was destroyed by hail at the ovary stage. What was not beaten rotted during the frost. Balian smile. Only myself didn't expect to admire such apples. This is a famous variety. The Defender generously brought these apples to us from another region, where a seedling was delivered many years ago from a southern country by a very good person, despite the difference in climate. The tree has taken root. The police officer thanked him again for the apples, dictated his phone number just in case, and saying goodbye, left the apartment. Despite the successful solution to the problem, Boris's petty revenge in the form of calling the police turned out to be a rather exhausting event for everyone, Bale jokingly stating. That's it. We've had enough cleaning for today. Where has this been seen? A girl came to visit us, and we gave her a broom and dustbin. That's it, girls. Let's set the table in my room. With this horde, we will be completely starved. Helen was removed from preparing for the feast, and she hurried to call her dad to report that the conversation with the lawyer had helped her get out of a very difficult situation. Michael and Anne, who knew a noticeably softened version of events from her husband, were relieved when their daughter reported this information. Still, even at 24 years old, Helen remained for her parents the same beloved little girl whom they wanted to protect, to cover with their care like a dome, impenetrable to all kinds of evil. As Alice said, Anna turned out to be an incredibly skilled craftswoman when it comes to food. Helen enjoyed trying the seemingly simple but extremely tasty Basifi AA. After tea with delicious and homemade sweets, Sophie asked her guest, can we arrange a video conference on Skype with your dad? I would like to get to know my half-brother at least in this remote way. Helen admit, my parents also asked me about this, but I didn't know how to offer it. Is it convenient? Alien threw out her hands. His daughter, my clever girl. What a good idea you came up with. Come on quickly, set everything up. Just a few minutes later, an image of Michael appeared on the laptop screen. First of all, the man began to ask Alien for forgiveness. It's difficult for me to talk about this, but the happiness of my parents' family and my, in fact, carefree childhood were actually built on the foundation of your misfortunes. Most likely, if letters from you had fallen into the hands of your father earlier, he would probably have found a way to help you. However, my mother was most likely afraid that he would give up everything and ask for a divorce. And he will go to you and his daughter, whom he never had the chance to meet. I sincerely apologize to you, Sophie. I want you to know that you can always count on me. Helen will leave you my phone number and other contacts. Contact us anytime you need it. Helen sat with the hospitable hostesses until the evening, listening and talking about herself and her family. Despite the rather strange circumstances of meeting, no one felt the slightest awkwardness. I didn't even think that I would suddenly have such a wonderful niece. Alien, named Sophie for Helen, saw in her a subtle, almost imperceptible resemblance to George. Similar facial features, dimples, the funny habit of wrinkling your nose and frowning when you smile. For so many years, the woman remembered the only man she loved desperately. And then, as if out of habit, she hoped to meet. And now there is no more chance to see each other. It was incredibly sad, and there was only one consolation. George did not forget her and did not betray her. I naively believe what she said then. That's the only thing she could reproach him for, even if she wanted to countless times, Alien imagined that she had handled that fateful conversation differently. If only then, more than half a century ago, she had only found the courage to tell her beloved that her father was threatening to kill him if she had offered to run away. However, George would probably have found a more correct way to solve the problem. If only she had honestly told him everything many years ago. Most likely, they would now be together as they dreamed maybe for Sophie, who would have felt the care and support of her father in her personal life. Everything would have turned out much more successfully. Everything would have been much better. And she would not have gotten involved with this slippery, nasty Boris. They incredibly regretted that she was unable to protect her fragile love. But she couldn't blame the woman who became George's legal wife for this. In the end, it was she, even under pressure, who rejected her loved one. This means there is no point in looking for someone to blame on the side. The day turned out to be long, eventful, and after a hearty meal and long conversations, those sitting at the table began to yawn, either one by one or all at the same time. Helen flatly refused to be escorted to the hotel. Don't worry, please. The taxi will take me directly to the place, so there will be no difficulties. As soon as I'm in my room, I'll let you know right away. Sophie said goodbye to Helen as a close relative, 
with whom they share not only blood ties but also friendship before getting into taxi. The girl waved to her new acquaintances for a long time looking out of the window and did not notice how Boris, who was holding a grudge, was approaching her from a bench installed at the next entrance. The man believed that it was this strange young upstart whom he saw today, for the first time in his life, who was to blame for the unsuccessful day. Just think he grabbed it lightly, but it hurt her why she left the house and didn't even think to inform him. It is clear that the matter is unclean. He, as a husband, had every right to teach her how a decent woman should behave. And this little girl, instead of apologizing, began to argue with him, explaining that she had not done anything wrong, so he cut off her oxygen, a little to discourage her. And then, as luck would have it, the evil fury came at the wrong time and hit him on the head with all Horace touched the back of his head, feeling a painful lump, and continued to think about the insult that he had to endure. Surely everything would not have turned out at all joyfully for the wife and her foolish mother, if not for an unfamiliar face. The devil dared her to end up in their apartment today. The man was sure that without the support of this educated trash, women would not have dared to blather in his direction. Moreover, he would have been able, most likely would have been able to convince the uh, district police officer that the women were conspiring against him. But this young sheep turned out to have a trump card after the intervention of an obviously competent lawyer who knew all the laws. He, Boris, had to leave the apartment as a beggar, although he also has the right to square meters. However, the battle for them is still ahead. In the meantime, we need to deal with these insolent women. Of course, he's now breaking in on his wife and her mother. It's no use. They were probably locked with all the locks and a chain. But to lie and wait and teach a lesson, that would be right. It was for this reason that Boris sat on the bench, sort of like a predator in ambush, waiting for Sophie to see when the defenseless sheep leaves the herd and finds itself in his power. The man even laughed and was glad that he had found such a comparison. But the way dragged on. The autumn evening, gentle and merciless, had already begun to hint that the planned hunt would not take place. Boris was trembling, either from suppressed rage or from hunger and cold and was about to leave. But then the entrance door opened and a girl jumped out into the street. Boris's joy was somewhat premature because the impudent sheep climbed into the taxi. But this only provoked the man. The chase is the chase. Luckily, the cars are nearby. In the meantime, heavy traffic in the city will not allow the future victim to disappear from view. Helen had already grabbed the door handle to the hotel, dreaming of quickly collapsing on the bed and getting some sleep. But she heard a voice behind her. The girl automatically turned around and lost precious fractions of a second. Boris, whose voice she recognized very well, was rapidly approaching her. Helen turned away and, trying to quickly get into the hotel, out of fear began to push the doors in the wrong direction. When finally salvation was close, the man grabbed her by the waist, turned her to face him, and began to threaten her in a falsely affectionate tone. Where were you in such a hurry? Explain to me why the hell are you interfering in my family life? Why are you silent, sheep? Who asked you to intervene? The girl prepared to scream loudly and wondered how to free herself, but I didn't have to look for salvation on my own. She could not see how a district police officer, who was already in civilian clothes, appeared from the slightly open door behind her, but she was incredibly happy when she heard, Hey, Boris, you are completely wrong now. Let the girl go. There were steely notes in the policeman's voice, and Boris instantly loosened his grip and made excuses to the district police officer. I just came to talk. Then I thought of inviting him for a walk and showing him the city. The policeman, leaving the hotel, ask. Helen, if you don't mind, wait for me in the foyer. I need to agree on something with Boris. Helen sat down in a comfortable chair. A few minutes later, a local police officer sat down next to him and admitted, you know, I actually came to see you. My parents immediately lost peace when they saw the apples. They asked me to come to an agreement with you about the cuttings. His father wants to vaccinate him and try to grow such beauty too. And I can't count how many times the markets have cheated with varieties. The picture shows one thing, but what emerges is something completely different. So I came here to the hotel. And as it turns out, it's not in vain. The girl smiled. She liked this young and somehow very correct and principled policeman. In gratitude for her salvation, she promised him to send as many Sherenkov as she wanted when she got to her grandfather two houses away. They exchanged contacts and said goodbye. The man did not want to part with the charming girl, but he could no longer find any reason to stay close to her. 
It seems that it was not in vain that Grandfather George sent me to look for Sophie in my dreams. He also advised me to take apples with me. Events after meeting the relatives began to develop with frightening speed. Sophie divorced Boris, and after exchanging the apartment, they moved at the invitation of Michael to his father's house. The man suggested from the bottom of his heart, since I am aware of my mother's guilt, let this house be at least a small compensation for all your suffering and sat for a long time by the apple tree, carefully grown by his loved one, stroking it like a living creature. And Helen, who was always a welcome guest, was glad that the elderly woman, although belatedly, had found peace. In the personal life of the granddaughter, the glossy fruits of the airport also played an important role. Correspondence and regular telephone conversations with Sergio, that policeman, helped to find out that their sympathy is mutual and does not weaken over time, but even becomes stronger. Soon the lieutenant moved to the city to live with his girlfriend, explaining, well, our police required everywhere, and if necessary, I can master another profession. Sophie also found her personal happiness when she met a man in a new city. Anna, stroking the apple tree, quietly whispered, thank you, George. I know for sure that it was you who helped arrange everything so successfully. Julia was born when her mother was 33 years old. It was a long-awaited child, whom everyone loved from the moment of conception. Barry, I'm pregnant, Selena told her husband. Well, finally, he hugged her. From that moment, when everyone found out that a daughter and granddaughter would soon be born, Selena began to be watched and cared for very closely. Up to that point, Barry and Selena had tried many times to have a child, but nothing had worked out. Not that there had been miscarriages or anything, but not even a pregnancy. How are you feeling? Grandma asked Selena all the time. Fine, she answered. Nothing's bothering you? The old lady was worried that something might happen. No, if something happens, I'll be sure to tell, Selena assured everyone. Almost the whole pregnancy the girl went well. Nothing bothered her. Her stomach did not hurt. Everyone helped her as much as they could. A couple of times at the end of the term she had high blood pressure, so she had to go to the hospital, otherwise everything went well. Oh, I heard Barry in the night. Darling, what's wrong? I heard my husband moaning. I think I've got it all started, she held her stomach. For this occasion they had everything ready, the bags were packed, the car was standing near the entrance. All that was left was to pack everything, get in, and drive to the hospital, which they did. That's it. Come on, love. He left her alone. That's it. I'll call you. She kissed him and went into the maternity ward. If the beginning was rapid, then everything calmed down. I'm in pain, cried Selena. Nothing, Barrett. Barrett soothed her midwife. But the girl could not tolerate. She asked to be put anesthetized or something else just to relieve this terrible pain. Everything started very long. The pain was so stretched out that Selena thought she would just die here on this labor chair. But when the baby's head came through, her whole body just slipped out of her. And immediately there was a relief that could not even be expressed in words. Selena looked at her baby and couldn't believe she'd done it. Julia, she stroked her head. Congratulations, mommy, the doctor told her. Thank you, exhaled Selena. In a few hours, she was already in the room. They brought her daughter to be fed. It was all so unusual and unfamiliar. The girl was born at four in the morning. At this time, Selena did not call her husband because she did not want to wake him up and disturb him. But when the morning came, she didn't spare him. Barry, you become the father of a beautiful baby girl, she said into the phone. Darling, thank you for your daughter, he told her. And by lunchtime, the young husband was at the hospital window. He was smiling, looking at his daughter, and then, during the day, all the other relatives began to pull up, mother, grandmother, mother-in-law. All of them wished only health to this new person who was born. When will you be discharged? Her mother asked her. They promised the third day, Selena said. I see what you mean. They wanted to go to their apartment to clean it. On the third day, indeed, Selena and her daughter were discharged. Around the maternity hospital met all the same relatives. After that, they decided not to bother the young mother, to let her settle in a little, and I'll probably go with you, the grandmother said. Okay, Selena was fine with everyone else going too. Yes, she had a baby, but in the hospital she complained that she was 30 years old, but it was her first child, 
and she didn't know what to do with it. They helped her give birth, and then just threw the baby away, and that was it. She's already resented it. So now she's decided she's going to do it herself. Barry, please put the kettle on and make some unsweetened porridge, she asked her husband. Now give me one minute, the young man told her, then went to the kitchen, rattled the dishes, and then returned with a plate of freshly made porridge. Here, thank you, thanked his wife. Aren't you tired? He asked her. Not too tired, she admitted frankly. Selena really was not very tired, because there were so many helpers around. Well, my favorite daughter, Selena liked to talk to her when no one was home. Do you want me to read you a book? After these words, she would take in her hands fairy tales. While her mother read to her daughter, she would lie there and look at her. It was immediately clear that this was a curious child. All the relatives came daily to Selena because it was the only child in their family. Aren't you tired? Barry often asked her in the evenings. After bathing and putting the child to bed, it is a pleasant fatigue, his wife answered him. I'm glad for that, that you don't complain like so many other mammas, her husband kissed her, it was always like that. The older Julia got, the more curious she became. Where did this come from? What is this? She asked her grandmother when she visited her. Here, look, she told everything calmly. She had nowhere to hurry. Interestingly, the girl liked to climb through her grandmother's closets. In them stood different boxes, and in them were jewelry, brooches, beads, earrings, rings. All this girl poured out on the floor she liked to dress up. In general, Julia spent a lot of time with her grandmother. Selena went to work. The girl had to leave her with someone, so the grandmother agreed because she did not want to give her to the early kindergarten. Thank you, Mom. Selena came by tonight. It's my pleasure, she hugged her daughter. Grandma taught the little girl a lot of things. They cooked dumplings together, chopped cabbage, cooked cold soup. Julia was interested in everything. Why is this picture hanging here? Granddaughter asked her grandmother. It's a picture from a fairy tale, the woman began to tell. Which one? Sat down and prepared to listen to her granddaughter. And why is it here? The insistent girl asked. For beauty, isn't it beautiful? The woman was surprised. Beautiful, agreed her granddaughter. So let it hang. The grandmother always diverted this conversation. Selena tried to spend a lot of time with her daughter. She and Barry went to the movies every weekend, not forgetting to take the little girl with them. They spent a lot of time together as a family. Would you come this weekend? Barry's mother asked them. Of course, they were used to getting together like this. Her husband's father had passed away a long time ago, and Selena didn't have a father either, so they didn't leave their mothers behind. Why don't I have grandfathers? Julia often asked. They happen to be in heaven, Grandma said sadly. It's a pity. We would go for walks with them. Julia was a little girl, but very sensible. Often staying with her grandmother, they learned poems, so the little girl's memory was perfectly developed. Already in a year, at New Year's matinee, she could tell long poems. Everything was good, little girl. Sit, do not sit at home, but in the garden to go to the garden must go. As then on the weekend came Selena home to his mother. It is a pity to give such a little girl, although Julia was already three years old. For relatives, she will always remain a little girl. It's okay, let her go. There are guys there socializing, Selena said. She understood that her mother could sit with her for as long as she wanted, but she had to enter society. Yeah, I agree, Olivia sighed. And so the day came when Julia had to go to kindergarten. The first day was difficult. The girl came to kindergarten normally. She did not cry, did not ask to go home. But when we went for a walk to the plot, she took a big stick and just went home. We lived close by. Barry was getting ready for work. He was shaving in the hallway when he heard a knock on the door. Where are you coming from? He looked at his daughter with frightened eyes. I'm going home, Julia said in a businesslike manner. No, Terry, that won't do. He gathered himself and took the child back to the daycare center. Oh, thank you for not panicking. The teacher thanked him. No way, I know my daughter, he smiled. I can't figure out who's missing, she said to Barry. That's it, watch the kids. I've got to run, he said. And then he left. After that, there were no more incidents at the daycare center. Julia was on her best behavior. Well, how is my daughter here? Asked the mother from the teacher. All is well, 
but just does not give children to learn poetry, complained the woman. What do you mean? Selena didn't understand. I put notes in the lockers in the evening, and she takes them out of there, learns everything, and then, as the smartest, at the party alone tells everything, said the teacher. It's so clear she can read, so she can't learn, her grandmother taught her to read a long time ago. That's what I'm talking about, the kindergarten worker shook her head. Let's hope that this is a transitional period, and soon everything will get better, hoped the mother. Indeed, the further Julia went to the daycare center, the better things got. The girl spent more and more time at her grandmother's house. Together they went to the garden, made beds there, planted them. When there were the first sprouts, they thinned them out, then weeded them. And at the end of the summer, when the whole harvest was gathered, it was collected in bags and lowered into the pit. Fa, exhausted, imitated the little girl grandmother, the surrounding only laughed at her. Oh, so young and already so tired, clapped on the sides of the grandmother. They spent time together very often. While her mother was pursuing her career, Julia was with her grandmother all the time. We should go to my homeland, Olivia once said. How? Her granddaughter asked. She had told her many times, but Julia had never been there. Would you take me with you? The girl looked with such eyes that it was hard to refuse. At the weekend, they went to the bus station, took a bus there, and went to the place where the woman was born. And who lives there now? All the way the granddaughter asked questions. No one, just a house left, sighed Olivia. Why did it stay there? The granddaughter wondered. It's just that everyone has gone to town, so it's just sitting there, the grandmother tried to explain. And what will we do there? Asked the next question the girl. Nothing, we'll warm the house, see what's in the vegetable garden, go to the bathhouse, and in the evening we'll go back, Olivia told her the plan for the day. Yes, a lot to do. Shook her head like an adult Julia. A lot, sighed Grandma. They would arrive, do all the things the woman had talked about before. After that, they washed in the bathhouse and then drank delicious tea with honey. Well, back, asked the grandmother. Ah, shouted the girl. And again, they were shaking in the bus. It was time to graduate from kindergarten. And again, all the relatives were here, next to the girl. Mom, Dad? Grandmothers congratulated her on the first completed step in her life, or rather the past step. School was ahead, but Julia was not afraid of it. She was waiting for her to come to the classroom and sit at the desk. Are you ready? Mom and Dad were standing in the hallway. The grandmothers were coming to the line. Yes, she nodded her head. Good riddance then, her father pushed her toward the door. They arrived in the schoolyard and the grandmothers were already there. Everyone was in a good mood, congratulating their child for going to school for the first time. I promise you that I will study well, the girl said to her relatives. And we'll help you, they said. Well, I think you and I will often have to do our lessons together. Olivia was sure of it. She loved her grandmother, and she loved her grandmother back. The first bell rang and the children went to their class. Dear first graders, the teacher said the first word to them, I wish you a bright road. After the class hour was over, the boys poured out into the schoolyard. Today, it was already possible to go home. To me, the grandmother looked at her granddaughter because she knew that her parents had to go to work. Yes, Julia loved to spend time with her most favorite person, so she always enjoyed going to visit her. Her grandmother told her granddaughter often the same story, how she was little, how she came into the world, what she did. Olivia was born in the distant 1933, she lived happily with her parents, nothing said that there would be something terrible. But the war began, the parents went to the front, and the girl was sent to an orphanage because she was very small. But when she was seven years old, there was a fire in the institution, everything burned, including all the personal files and documents. They made new documents for the children, where their age was put on their sight. That's when I was five years older, because I was tall and strong, Olivia said. And then there was a war, her granddaughter asked her. Yes, but it did not come to our town. We were only evacuated, continued to tell her grandmother. And what happened next was interesting to the girl. She studied in the fifth grade. They began to pass the theme of the Great Patriotic War. To us in the city evacuated a whole factory. It used to be on the territory of Ukraine. And in September, it was brought to us, Olivia recalled. Wow. And how it was rebuilt again, asked the girl. 
I can't tell you that, because I don't know, but it was built very quickly, that's for sure. And after that, both old and young went to work there. Grandmother immersed herself so much in memories that it seemed she was not here at all. And you worked there too. The girl was amazed. Of course, together with my mother, we, when it was possible, went home. But, mostly, we were always at the production. They worked in several shifts then. So many people just spent the day and night there. Many people had no shoes. It was impossible to walk. There were iron shavings on the floor. You had to protect your feet somehow. And if you walked in the same shoes, both on the street and indoors, you wouldn't have enough felt boots, my grandmother recalled. Wow, you were a child. Sat and looked out the window of Julia. Grandmother never said anything like that, and mom too. That's nothing, we kids who worked there. Sometimes we couldn't even reach the machine, but we had to. We put the crates, and so we stood there all day long. Cried the woman, apparently she remembered something. Tell me something else, my granddaughter asked. What to tell? Times were hard. There was nothing to eat, nothing to wear. We struggled as we could. Wiped her tears, grandmother. Don't be so upset. It was all a long time ago. Julia pitied her. Okay, baby girl, hugged her grandmother. There was a very close bond between them. They sat on the bed, hugging, Olivia still sobbing, remembering how and what she'd had as a child. This story made Julia's mind real, and she decided to write a report on it because it involved her grandmother. What are you thinking about? Her grandmother leaned over her. Nothing, I want to write a story about you and tell it to my classmates in class, disclosed her granddaughter. Okay, Olivia agreed. They took out the pictures, which for some reason had been in the grandmother's reticule and began to look at them. Where are all these people? Asked her granddaughter. Who is where? The grandmother was evading the answer. How I would like to have a big family, said the girl. And you have a small one? The woman was surprised and laughed. Not as big as I would like, not even a grandfather. She curved her lips as if she wanted to start crying. It's all right, yes, that's how it happened in our lives, shook her head grandmother. And where did he die in the war? Asked the girl. I don't want to talk about that. Olivia turned away from her. Well, and then someday will you tell me? Looked her granddaughter in the eyes. Maybe, the woman promised, and changed the subject. No, I don't want to talk about it. The grandmother started talking about school and what happens in it. Why I need to know about your business, Olivia wondered. I want to know about your childhood, how your mother was born. I'm interested in all that, Julian insisted. Well, maybe someday I'll tell you all about it, or maybe your mother will tell you, she said. Okay, you think I'm still young, don't you? Guess the girl. Everything is possible, and now let's go to the kitchen. I'll show you how to start the dough for pancakes. Grandma taught her granddaughter different wisdom, which will be useful later in ordinary life. Julia already knew how to take a hook, needles, to make any kind of dough, cooking, and all this at the age of 10. No, I cannot do it, could not stir the girl flour into the liquid, so that there were no lumps. Nothing, Washington was not built at once, Grandma said calmly. They made the dough, made pancakes, then Grandma made morsels, and they were full. Well, shall we go and lie down for a while? The old lady asked her. Okay. They went to the room that used to be mom's room. There was a TV set in it, but it didn't work well, and the same picture hung on the wall. Can you tell me the story? Grandma asked her granddaughter. This picture has haunted me since childhood, smiled the girl. Julia was still chattering when she heard her grandmother already sniffling. She covered her eyelids too, deciding to take a little nap. That's how they slept, cuddled together. Grandma was the first to wake up, realizing that they had been asleep for more than three hours. No wonder, first so much to cut, then not so much to sleep, she said to herself. Baba Olivia, Julia called out to her when she woke up. What's up, my dear? She peeked into the room. You know, I was just thinking, that's where my daddy works, she said. Yes, so he is the only one in town, stroked her on the head grandmother. So it has been functioning in our town for many years. It was such an interesting topic that the girl decided to ask her parents about it at home. Julia was so impressed with the different stories today that she wanted to learn more and more. She herself started reading about the local city forming enterprise, what it does, why it was evacuated here, who works here, and other things. Everything was interesting. 
Daddy, it turns out that you work at such an enterprise, which helped people in war times she came home in the evening happy. Yes, did you know that? He was surprised. No, only today my grandmother told me, my daughter told him. Wow. And you were not taken on an excursion? He asked. They did, but they didn't tell me about it. Apparently they thought it was too early, she concluded. The girl was growing up. She remained very curious. She was interested in everything, especially in what was connected with the war. When she was in the eighth grade, she already knew a lot about the local factory. She wrote more than one report on the subject, and the information still did not end. Grandma, tell me something more about our plant, she often asked her. What to tell? I have already told you everything. The woman did not understand. Well, I don't even know, Julia herself did not understand why she had developed such an interest in this institution. The girl had been collecting materials, sitting in the plant's library for a long time. Julia already knew almost by sight all those who in different years led this enterprise. If she had been woken up at night and asked him what year the plant was evacuated and started working, she would have told it with her eyes closed. Couldn't any of our relatives have worked there? She asked her grandmother once. Why such questions? She didn't understand. It's just that so many people work there and no one is our relative, she asked. I don't know. The woman shrugged her shoulders. I see, we will find out further, Julia. Did not want to give up. In her head has long settled the idea to find at least some of their relatives. It can't be that everyone came from somewhere and there are no relatives. Julia had long watched the program looking for you. She dreamed that when she grew up, she would write a letter there and look for her grandfather or his children. She even told her grandmother about it, but she just waved her hand. You'll only waste your time, she said then. And what if I find someone, argued her granddaughter. Let's make a deal. You'll do it after I'm gone. Grandma Olivia asked her. Let's see, the girl thought to herself that grandma might live for many more years. This was a topic they had brought up and mused about more than once. The girl also learned that during the evacuation of the plant, together with him came several specialists from abroad and further did not stop coming. It was very interesting, so Julia did not leave this topic. Grandma, why did you give birth to only one daughter? One day her granddaughter asked her. It just so happened she couldn't find anything to answer. Now I would have aunts and uncles and so no one, daddy is also a grandma one, was sad girl. Why are you so caught up in these relatives? Olivia did not understand. I don't know, it's a big city, the factory too, during the war, whoever came here. And there are no relatives, she was saddened. Well, no and no, you will get more, pressed her lips grandmother, because now there is nothing to change. That's right, the girl was all grown up. Olivia was glad she'd lived to be at least that age. It's not scary to leave now, she often said. What are you starting again? She and Julia were at the cottage. The girl had just gone on vacation. She had finished ninth grade. I should have taken my father with me. He would have attached the hoses to the pipes. They were supposed to turn on the irrigation today and everything was broken. So let's ask him in the evening. He will come and do everything, suggested her granddaughter. Okay, agreed with her grandmother. They spent the whole day digging, making and shaping beds. After that, they planted beets and carrots as well as onions. After tired, they got ready to go home. They went to the bus stop, down the bus, drove home. Julia went to her parents to tell her father about the pipes, and Olivia went home. Father, Granny and I need help. The girl came home. Speak up. Barry listened to her. Tonight there will be watering and we have all the hoses broken, complained the daughter. Don't worry, I'll get it done. He got dressed and went to the store to buy clamps and hoses. Everything was purchased and the man went to the garden. The job took only a few minutes, and an hour Barry was back in town. The hoses were ready. Julia was supposed to be at her grandmother's house by 7 o'clock, and they would go to the garden again. But her girlfriends came for her. Are you coming with us? They were waiting for her answer. That's right, I had completely forgotten. She remembered that she had promised the girl's friends to go for a walk with them today. Come on, Grandma can handle it all by herself, the friends urged. Yes, moreover, my father did everything. She nodded her head that there was nothing complicated there. Well, let's go for a walk, because with these vegetable gardens she forgot all about us, her friends asked her. All right, agreed Julia. 
she went into the apartment, changed her clothes, and went out to her friends. This evening they had to go to the disco, the girl thought she was letting her grandmother down, but she also wanted to spend time with the girls, so she decided not to think about it. In the evening she still went to the disco, and it was very late when she came home. She opened the door with her keys, entered the apartment, it was silent. She thought her parents were asleep, she tiptoed in, but there was no one in the room. I don't get it, where is everyone? Julia turned on the light. She went to the other room, but there was no one there either. The girl went out on the balcony. The apartment was on the top floor. Opposite was visible the house of grandmother. In her windows was burning light. What? Did not understand the girl. She knew for sure that the grandmother at this time is always asleep. Julia gathered herself again and went to her grandmother's house. Luckily, she lived only a block away. The girl was shaking and couldn't stop shaking. By the time she got to Olivia's house, her whole body was shaking. She entered the entryway, went up to the floor, opened the doors. Everyone was here, the ambulance, the neighbors, the other grandmother. Mom, what's wrong with grandma? Julie asked. She's not well, Selena said in a dead voice. And what happened? Granddaughter did not understand. Just a few hours ago, they were digging beds with her, and now she is sick. I don't know something with her heart, so I called an ambulance. The woman was on the verge of hysterics. Olivia was hospitalized. They took her away in an ambulance. Now the grandmother was in the hospital. Selena and her daughter visited her grandmother every day. They didn't want anything terrible to happen, but they couldn't prevent it. What they feared most of all happened. How could it be? Everyone was crying around the woman's coffin. Barry, what happened? His wife asked him. I arrived that day, I did as I was asked, and then when Olivia arrived, she said there was nothing, he said. How could that have happened? Selena looked at her husband incredulously. I don't know, I didn't believe her, I decided to check it myself, and I went there again to the garden when I was there. I saw that there was really nothing, he said. But you did? The wife clarified. Of course, why should I deceive? I looked. There was all cut off. It was obvious that the man considers himself guilty of what happened. Calm down, Selena hugged him. There were a lot of people at the funeral, all condoling with the relatives. Selena and Julia were inconsolable. Grandma cried her granddaughter. She didn't understand how she was going to live without her now. After the funeral, everyone went to the dining room and then home. We have to learn to live without Grandma, Selena said. I understand, the girl nodded. They had to finish two more grades of school before they could go anywhere. Now the topic of war was especially relevant. At school, they often asked to write essays on these topics, and always Julia wrote about her grandmother. She raised the topic of the factory, which she had long studied. It turned out that there was still a lot of interesting things. The girl wrote about it, the workers who stood at the origins and other things. Mom, and you have not tried to find your father. Once asked her daughter from Selena, Oh, and why should I? If he for all these years did not want to communicate with me, then I have no reason to look for him, said the one. And I wonder who my grandfather was. This question has long tormented the girl. If you want, you can look for him, said the woman. Okay, Julia collected all the documents of her mother. She knew little about her father. You don't even have to ask about the last name. The mother warned her right away. Then how will I find him? Julia didn't understand. I don't know, her mother shrugged. Well, let's wait a little longer. Maybe he had other children. Maybe they will find us, the girl concluded. The 11th grade was coming to an end. It was necessary to pass final exams and to enter somewhere. Julia was not worried. She chose history because she studied in a humanitarian class. She knew that even if she didn't learn the ticket, she had a lot of things to say in her head. Are you ready for the exams? Her mom asked her. Yes, of course, her daughter never let her down. She always studied well. She came to the exams. She got a ticket about the war, specifically about the blockade. It's a very sad topic. While Julia was talking, she saw tears in the eyes of the commission members. Well, mom greeted her daughter. Five, what else could it be? Smiled in response. Then there was literature, which the girl also passed on excellent, well, and written subjects. Would you come to my graduation? Julia asked her mother. I do not even know if they will let her go from work, the woman said, 
but she really wanted to get there. And so this solemn day came Julia in a beautiful dress, with a hairstyle went to school with a bouquet of flowers. Selena promised to come later. The girls were all handsome, the guys in strict suits. And what, where are you going now? They asked each other about enrollment. I'm in the neighboring city in the pedagogical college, Julia said. Clearly, no one else from you and did not expect, laughed girlfriends. I think it is just in my interest, said the girl. When they announced the beginning of the ceremony, Julia saw her mother enter the hall. She walked over to the other parents and sat down on a chair. I congratulate our graduates of today, the headmistress spoke. After her, the teachers came out, and then the parents. Everyone received their diploma and everyone went to their classrooms where the students congratulated their class teachers. And then there was an informal part in the canteen. Parents did their best for the children, they set the tables, even had champagne. After that pupils and parents went away. According to the custom, yesterday school children went to meet the dawn and the older ones stayed at school. Some went home, but no one was offended. Well, it's time to go to school, Julia's mom said on her day off. Good, that one was ready for it. They got on the bus and drove to the next town. There were no problems with the enrollment, they just had to go to the institute a few times. And then there were exams, everything went easily, the girl didn't even realize how it went. Congratulations, you are now applicants, said the woman who announced the results of enrollment. Now go home, Selena told her daughter. Good, she agreed. Now she had to decide where she would live, in a dormitory or rent an apartment. Where would you like to live? Her mom asked her. In an apartment, of course, her daughter told her. Well, all students live in a dormitory. If you don't live there, you won't feel like a student, Selena said. Okay, let's, I'll first move into the dorm and then we'll see, agreed the girl. Here and agreed, the mother realized that the apartment she would not be able to pull, even if her husband adds. All summer Julia spent at home, she walked with friends, went to discos, had a blast. At the end of August, she went to check into the dormitory. Hi, when she entered the room, there were already two girls there. Hello, they greeted her. My name is Julia. The girl introduced herself from the doorstep. I'm Kira and this is Nelly. The girls had already gotten to know each other. Nice to meet you, she set her bag on the bed. I wonder who else will visit us. One bed was empty. The girls were sorting out their things, no one had stopped by today. In the evening they all cooked together in the kitchen and got to know the other tenants. The next day they went to the institute together, it was interesting and fun. The whole day they were familiarized with the subjects, with the teachers. And then the real study began. So how did you like it at the institute? Julia asked me in the evening. Nothing so normally, Kira shrugged her shoulders. Interesting, at least for now, Nelly said. They continued to live, be friends and study together. Julia could go home every weekend because her town wasn't very far away, but she didn't want to because they also had school on Saturday and that wasn't very convenient. You're not going again? Her friends asked. No, it is better to go for a walk with you, said the girl. Okay, but there was no time to go for a walk, they told her. The girls spent a lot of time studying. They tried to work for credit in the first six months the first six months you work for the credit, the rest of the time the credit works for you. Her mother often told her. This meant that you had to do everything first to get good grades and favor with the teachers. And already in the next sessions, the examiners will look in the credit card. They do not want to spoil the good marks and put automatic. But all the same, there was time for walks. They were young, so they had time for a lot of things. The first year was over very quickly. Julia was going home for summer vacation. They said goodbye to the girls. Julia invited them to visit her, but they realized that they would meet in two months, so they didn't regret the party. And really, those couple of months flew by very quickly, and now it's August again, and they're back in their room. Hey, it's like they broke up yesterday, they all met up together. And don't tell me they hugged. Now they already had a cohesive team, they could go out on the first day. So who had a good summer? Julie asked. In my field, said Nellie. I was herding cows and harvesting hay. Wow, I've never done that before. Julia was surprised. I see, you're a city girl, said her friend. And you? They asked Kira, and I'm no way, almost all the time sat at home. She did not know what to say. 
all is clear with you, waved at her girlfriends. They started to live again like last year. Studying, preparing, socializing, everything was fine. Listen, let's have a party in the dormitory sometime, Kira suggested. Why we can't, we all know each other. Why not celebrate, agreed girlfriends. Now it remained to choose a holiday, and the day when they would celebrate it. Certainly not New Year's Eve, at that moment everyone goes home. Nellie began to list. Let's have a student's day. Julia suggested it. Indeed, it happens in the middle of the week, the others agreed with her. After that they gathered people on their floor and told them the idea. No one refused. That's great, all the students were happy. That was the end of it, and study continued. What are you going to do after graduation? One evening Kira and Julia were talking. Oh, what questions you have, you still have to finish it, she laughed. Do you doubt that? She raised an eyebrow. No, but it's a long time away, Julia said. Yeah, look how fast a year and a half has flown by, it'll be the same amount of time, and then it'll be the GCSEs, Kira was sure of it. I don't know, I'll work, I'll go to school, she didn't doubt it, if nothing changes. But I don't want to go to school, she said dreamily. Where to? Julia wondered. I don't know. I could go to a museum. Kira shrugged her shoulders. I didn't think about it. She stared at one point. And I recently learned that there was such an education they also take. The girl specifically found out. I see. Julia was thinking about something. What are you thinking about? I was wondering about her friend. Yes, about relatives. The girl admitted. And what do you think about them? Kira asked. Nothing, I don't have them, Julia said sadly. What do you mean? I don't understand. And just like that, just like that, for a long time I wanted to write to the program where people are looking for people. But I don't know anything. She was almost crying. Why are you so upset? Everything will be fine. Your relatives will be found. Kira tried to calm her down. Okay, I'm sorry, wiped her friend's tears. They hugged each other and sat like that for a long time. It was New Year's Eve and everyone went home. And when they arrived, the students began to prepare for the holiday, which they had agreed to celebrate. Some strange guys are coming today, Nellie said. Well, we'll get acquainted, laughed Julia. I'm afraid there won't be enough for all of them, her friend also laughed. When January 25th came, everything was ready in the dormitory. The girls made sandwiches, the boys bought wine. They all set the table together. The unfamiliar boys really came. He sat down at the table across from Julia. The girl kept her eyes on him. Hi, he got out of the table and walked over to her. Hello, she held out her hand. Let's go talk, he beckoned her over. Okay, she looked at her friend and left the table. They stepped back to the window. Anthony, he introduced himself. Julia, she answered him. Are you a student at this institute? He asked. Yes, in my second year, she nodded. And I'm in my fourth, he smiled. Are you renting an apartment? She guessed, because she had never seen him in a dormitory. Yeah, he nodded. Is it expensive? She wondered. It's fine, I make my own money, the guy shared with the girl. Julia looked at Anthony. She liked this guy. And who are you by nationality? He asked her. Why do you ask that? She was surprised. Well, it's just that you have such a weird eye cut and black hair, he told her. I'm American, she replied. Come on, don't mind me. I was just asking, Anthony smirked. Let's go back to the table, Julia called out to him. They went back to the table, now sitting side by side. Anthony had been joking all evening, she laughed. He was fun to be with. So, how do you like the new guy? Her girlfriend asked her when they came into the room in the evening. Wow, I like him, she admitted to her honestly. So are you going to be friends? Kira wondered. I don't know. He didn't offer anything. He didn't even set a meeting. They turned off the light in the room. Julia lay on her back and thought about Seriosa. She really liked this guy, but she didn't want to approach him first. The next day when they came to study at the first break, they met him. Hi, and I'm waiting for you here, he said. Hi, she blushed. She was pleased, but at the same time, she was shy. Let's go for a walk tonight, he offered her. I don't know. It's cold outside, she told him. And whoever stopped that? Let's go to a cafe, he invited her. Okay, where shall we meet? She heard the bell ring. Why don't I pick you up at the dorm tonight? He told her. I'll be waiting. She looked at him and ran to the auditorium. 
What did he say to you? Kira whispered to her when class started. He said he'd come by the dorm tonight to pick me up, Julia told her quietly. Well, wow, we had a celebration. Kira laughed so that the teacher paid attention to her. Julia spent the rest of the school day thinking about Anthony. She didn't know what to wear on this date, since it was her first. On the one hand, it was cold outside, and she needed to wear something warm, but on the other hand, if they went to the cafe, she wouldn't freeze. When they got back to the dormitory, she already assumed what she would wear. The girl decided not to show off too much on the first day, and put on jeans, a sweater, and a down jacket on top. Anthony picked her up at 7 in the evening, and they actually went to a nearby cafe. I don't know what got me so hooked on you, but I've been thinking about you all night, the guy told her. You have no idea, it was the same with me too, she blushed again. They ordered, nothing fancy, a bag of pistachios, and a glass of beer each. So, tell me a little about yourself, who you are, where you come from, what you're studying for, and what you think about your future. I'm an ordinary girl, I came from a neighboring town. Since I studied in the humanities class, I decided to enter the pedagogical school. I used to think that I would be a teacher, but recently a friend told me that with this education you can go to the museum, she began to tell me. I'm also an ordinary guy, studying at the fourth year, as you already know, soon to finish. But I do not want to work in the profession, he was extremely honest with her. And why? She was surprised. Why waste five years if you don't want to work in this profession? I don't know, I realize too late, but I need to get an education, he told her openly. Everything is clear with you, she laughed. They were still sitting and talking, the young man as yesterday, joked without ceasing. The girl liked it, she laughed. She was easy with this young man. That evening Anthony saw Julia off. They agreed that they would meet tomorrow. The next day was a day off. They didn't have to go to school, so they could walk around all day. So how was your walk? Her friend asked her when she came into the room. Everything is great. We agreed to meet tomorrow, Julia answered. I see you two are getting serious, Kira said. Nellie listened with interest. For some reason, she was not privy to these topics. Julia and Anthony really started to meet. They couldn't live a day without each other. Now often the girl stayed overnight at the young man's house and went to school from him. If this goes on, then you will soon move to him, said her friends. Maybe I will, she laughed. And that would be the end of our friendship. Kira made a sad face. Nothing can end a true friendship, Julia told her. By summer, Anthony and Julia were already living together seriously. And when the vacations came, the girl invited the guy to meet her parents. He immediately agreed because he had serious plans for the girl. Mom, dad, meet Anthony. This is Anthony. I told you about him. They went to her house when they arrived. Daughter, you should have at least warned her that you were not coming alone. Her mother said reproachfully. I wanted it to be natural so that no one would be prepared for anything. The girl answered her. They spent a month together in the city where Julia lived, slept in her room, and although her mother was against it, but Selena understood that her daughter had grown up, so she did not forbid her anything. It's your turn to meet my parents, Anthony told her as he left. Come on, two weeks before school starts, I will come to you, she told him, because she wanted to be with her parents. Okay, I'll be waiting, and so, bye, call me, he kissed her, got on the train, and drove off. Julia returned home. Her mother looked at her adult daughter, realized that soon, most likely, she will get married. So how do you like your future son-in-law? She asked her mother. Even so, her mother tilted her head. He is very good. If you got to know him better, you would understand that, said the daughter. I believe you. The woman agreed with her. Next year, he will finish the fifth year. And then, while he is in the army, I will also finish my education. Julia told her mother. And where are you going to live? She asked her. I think in this city, Julia told her. That's good, her mother said, because her grandmother's apartment is empty and she wanted you to have it all to yourself. It was the first time the woman had ever spoken of it. That's great news, Julia was pleased. She spent a month at home and then as promised went to Anthony. Hello, she entered his apartment. Siri Alsha had only her mother, she met her warmly hugged her, accepted her as her own daughter. Hello, Anthony has told me a lot about you, Natalie told her. 
I'm glad, she nodded her head. Two weeks passed very quickly, and she got to know her mother better. The young people told her what their plans were. Anthony, you have chosen a very nice girl, praised his mom. Okay, do not embarrass, he saw how Julia blushes. After these words, the young man and the girl, the day before the start of school got together and went. She to the dormitory, he to his apartment, which was still ready to rent for a year. Can't we move in together already? He asked her. No, Anthony, let's hold off, all in good time, she told him. Okay, he kissed her and they parted outside the dormitory. After that, every day it was either her at his place or him at hers. They met, went to caves, socialized with friends, everything was very good. New Year's Eve was celebrated at Julia's parents' house, and Anthony's mother also came there to meet them. It was nice to be in such warm company, Selena said to Natalie. I'm glad our families are united too, the woman said. I'm leaving in May, and when I come back, I want to take your daughter as my wife, Anthony began to say. That's how long it will take, Selena sighed. Nothing, while the service, study, and everything else, the time will pass quickly, said her daughter. She looked at her chosen one, and she felt good that now they were all sitting together and communicating as a family. Yes, I agree that you will have no time to relax, Selena nodded her head. The future in-law spent three whole days together, and when it was time to part ways, neither one wanted to do it. Anthony, I love you, were the two young people. And how I love you, he kissed the girl and pressed her to him. Spring passed very quickly, May came, followed by graduation. After that, Anthony received a summons, and now he was going to go to the army. Are we going to do a send-off? Julia asked the boy. He probably shrugged his shoulders. Okay, Julia nodded her head. She thought about where and how it could be organized. Not two weeks later, Natalie, with the help of Selena, Julia's mother, was setting the tables. They were expecting guests. Julia, open up. Anthony heard a knock on the door. Now she was welcoming friends of her favorite person. They'd all sat down at the table together, the young guys and gals toasting to a successful service, and also to Julia's waiting for him. I see you off as if not to the army, but to war, the girl told him. Do not worry, my dear. Everything will pass quickly, he promised her. Anthony did not need anyone and nothing today. The most important thing was to be near his beloved, with whom he planned not to see for the next two years. In the morning, on the station platform they hugged each other. I love you, and I will wait for you, she told him. I promise to write, he answered her. The train rumbled by, and the young man jumped on the footboard. He sent air kisses to Julia, to his mother, and to all who were at his send-off. And then the train moved, and he went from her. Only now the girl felt the tears come to her eyes. Cry, don't hold it in, her mother told her. Okay, Julia stepped aside, the tears flowing without ceasing. She realized that she would not see her beloved for a long time. The girl decided to hit the study, not to think about anything. Summer ended quickly, she helped her mother, then came the fall, and this study. She wrote Anthony every day, and received letters from him, which were permeated with love. Shall we go for a walk? Kira called her. No, I won't go anywhere. We have a lot of assignments. We still have to write a term paper. The girl said she didn't want to set herself up and go somewhere. All right, as you like. And we went, Nellie and Kira waved to her and left the room. But Julia wasn't bored. She was reading her lover's letters. She did other things. It was New Year's vacation time. She came home. Her parents welcomed her and Natalie was there again. I couldn't stay at home alone, so I decided to come to you, she said. Yes, of course, Selena had met Natalie. Their families had become so close that now they couldn't even remember the time when they weren't related. What if Anthony comes over and you two aren't together? Her mother told her later. Well, you and Natalie are friends, so why don't you continue to be friends? Although I don't think Anthony and I will break up, Julia was sure. Time flew fast. It was already summer. When the girl came home, she offered her mother to return her grandmother's vegetable garden. What's gotten into you all of a sudden? Selena didn't understand. I do not know. I want something to occupy myself, answered her daughter. The whole family went to the dacha, as they called it. They made beds there, planted everything. Everything was the same as before, with grandma. I don't believe that so many years have passed, 
sat down on a log the girl, and closed her eyes with her hands. All people leave this world. Her mother sat down beside her. Anthony will be back soon, her daughter told her. Not soon enough, her mother stroked her head. The last year at the Institute was very difficult. It was necessary to start writing a diploma, several term papers, as well as sessions, GOS, and everything else. But Julia got through it all, and when she had her graduation, she stood at graduation and looked only at the front door. She believed he should come today. And when the ceremony was over, she saw him, all handsome in his military uniform. Darling, she ran to him. He pressed her to him, and they stood together for a long time. There was still no one in the hall, so Anthony pulled Julia away from him, slipped his hand into his pocket, took out a small box, got down on one knee, and asked her to marry him. I accept, she clapped her hands. The girl had indeed waited a long time for this. Now the two happy people stopped by Natalie's house, sat at her table, and then drove to the town where Julia lived. Mama, Papa, we have arrived, shouted the girl in the customary manner. Come on in, darlings, went the mother out into the hall. She had been roughly expecting them in these numbers. Look, Julia showed her her ring finger. Jesus, honey, congratulations, their mother hugged them both. Julia was very happy to have her favorite people by her side, and soon she was going to marry one of them. So, where are you going to live? Her mother asked her. I don't know, if you let us, we'll take the place where grandmother used to live, the daughter said. Of course we will. Grandma left you this apartment. Selena was happy for her children. You know what I want to tell you parents? You are the best. Julia hugged them. She and Anthony drove to the apartment where her grandmother used to live. I haven't been here since she died. She confessed to the young man. Are you having a hard time? He asked her. A little bit, she admitted honestly. And what are we going to do about it? He asked her. Nothing. We'll change everything here so that nothing reminds me of her. Julia walked around the apartment and touched everything with her hands. Oh, look, and here is this picture, which all my childhood stressed me. She pointed to the picture where Ivan Sarevich rides on the gray wolf. A very old painting, I see. Anthony touched it with his hands. Yes, let's take it down so that it doesn't remind me of my childhood, the girl asked him. When they took the painting off the wall, they saw a small door behind it, as if it were a safe. What is it? Anthony asked her. I don't know, it's the first time I've seen it, she said. Come on, let's open it, he looked at her. Okay, come on. The girl reached out her hand and opened the door. Inside was something like a photo album. What is it? Anthony asked. Strange, said the girl. I don't see anything strange, her future husband told her. Just all the photos grandmother kept in her bag, and here is a photo album. Some other interesting, she took it out, went and sat on the bed. When Julia opened it, she turned white. After that, she started to reread everything it said. It was a kind of grandmother's diary, and why hadn't she found it before? Shall I leave you? Anthony asked her. Yes, if you don't mind, she asked him. Okay, out of the way, he went outside. Julia sat, looking through, and rereading everything in the scrapbook. Here's her grandmother young. Here she is getting a job at the local factory. This is after high school. Here's a postcard of some kind. That was the first piece of news. What did it all mean? Julia couldn't understand. She flipped through the pages and the third page was the most interesting. There was a picture of her grandmother standing next to a man of Asian appearance, signed Jang Fong Wee at the bottom. And underneath the photo was a letter of confession. Darling, I can't stay here all the time. I'm expected back home, so I have to leave you behind. Always your Vi. Julia sat there, looking at it all and crying. So that's where it came from, she realized. The beginning detailed how two Koreans had come to town, how everyone laughed at their names, and afterward, one was spelled Victor and the other Frederick. Julia couldn't believe that this was really the whole story about her grandmother. She had always been the perfect person for her, and now such a thing was being revealed. My beloved Victor, I've missed you so much. I decided to write though I don't know whether this letter will reach you or we will never see or hear from each other, wrote her grandmother, and it was pasted under the photo of the two of them. There was also an envelope, on which it was written in red letters, returned to sender. 
Tears came to the girl's eyes. She realized that her grandmother had loved and waited for the same man all her life. So that's why I have such a cut eye. She touched her slightly swollen eyelids. Julia sat back and looked through the album further. The further she flipped through, the more and more she realized. Didn't mom know about this? She asked herself. But Julia wasn't in a hurry to show it to anyone. She wanted to figure it out for herself first. She turned page after page and learned more and more about her beloved grandmother. Hi, my love. I thought I'd write to you. I'm doing well. I don't know how you are. You probably blame me for everything, and I deserve it. But I can't do anything else. I have a family, a house, children, and I can't come back to you. Victor wrote to her. Each letter was accompanied by a postcard or a photo. How much I love you, and I do not hold a grudge against you. I know that it is difficult for you. But you hold on. I love you. Grandma answered him. And since the letter was here, she was just answering, but she didn't send anything. Beloved, look at the views from our window. He sent another picture. And everything was really beautiful there. And then she would reply to him, describing how she felt. While Julia was reading this picture book, she cried more than once. Finally, she got to the last page. And there was a picture of her mother, just as she had suspected. Anthony, she looked outside from the window. Yes, are you finished? He was sitting on the bench. Come in, please, Julia asked him. The young man quickly went up to the floor. And what did you find out there? He wondered. Look, she showed him the last photo, which was also accompanied by a caption. And what is this? He did not understand. This is my grandmother, and in her arms is my mother. Julia looked at the young man. I see, and so, he pointed at the man, it's her father. It turns out so, the girl was still in shock. Wow, so that's how you got those eyes, he reminded her. He had asked her that the first time they met. Only I don't understand why grandma was hiding all this. Julia didn't know what to do now, whether her mother knew about it or not. Well, what to guess now? You should go and ask her directly, he advised his future wife. I'll do so. You can work here alone, and I'll go to my mother, she asked him. Okay, he agreed. Julia took the album put it in a bag, and went to her parents. She had a lot of things to think about while she was walking. What, where, and how? Why are you here? Selena was surprised when she saw her daughter coming home. I need to talk to you. She looked intently at her mother. Talk, I'm listening to you. Her mother was worried. She couldn't understand what was going on with her daughter. Did they have a fight with Anthony? After all, she came alone. Let's go to the kitchen, was puzzled daughter. They went into the kitchen, sat down at the table. Do you know who your father is? The first thing the girl asked. You know I don't. It seems to me that you and I had already talked about it, her mother told her. Yeah, and today we went to grandma's house. I decided to change everything there. And the first thing I did was take down this old painting right here. She pulled it out first. Yeah, I remember it. It was hanging in the little room, Selena confirmed. So, and behind it was something like a safe. Behind the painting, the girl pulled out an album. What is it? Selena didn't understand. An album where grandmother kept her most precious memories, Julia said. I don't understand. Selena looked up at her daughter. Look at it, Julia advised her. The woman opened the cover and immediately saw a Korean man in the photo and read all the captions below the photo. And most importantly, you'll still have time to read it all. Julia opened to the penultimate page. There Olivia stood with the little girl in her arms, in whom the woman recognized herself. And at the bottom was an inscription that she would never forget the one who had given her the most precious gift of her life. What you mean this man, my father? Tears spurted from Selena's eyes. She wouldn't lie, especially since they never saw each other again. He sent her postcards and hers never reached him. She showed the inscriptions. Julia, I don't believe my mother could be like this, the woman said through tears. But this album says otherwise. She showed her all the new letters and photos. Yes, I see it all. Selena turned to the window and stared at one point. And what are we going to do? The daughter asked and looked at her mother. I don't know, she answered honestly. Listen, do you want to know the relatives or the man himself if he is still alive? Julia was very interested in all this. I want to, but I'm afraid, Selena admitted honestly. Well, let me do it myself, her daughter asked. To be honest, you really shocked me today, Selena said. 
You can't imagine how shocked I was when I saw all this. Julia remembered the emotion she felt when she first saw it all. I imagine Selena heard the front door slam. It was Barry coming home. He made his way into the kitchen. The women had told him everything. He just didn't say anything, sat down on a chair, took a long look, and didn't say anything. And I wondered who our Russian girl had those eyes in. He looked at Julia. And Anthony asked me about it too, the girl confessed. What are you going to do? He looked at the women. I want to apply for wait for me. The girl did not want to hide anything from her parents. This is good, but imagine that the relatives on the other side will be against it, will not offend you. Immediately warned her father. No, she was sure of it. Good, then go ahead. Barry wished her good luck. While they were talking, Selena sat like that, staring at one point. Julia packed up all her things and headed back home. She didn't know that Anthony had peeled off almost all the wallpaper and it wouldn't be comfortable for them to sleep there. Oh, it's so dusty. The girl entered the apartment. Yeah, I don't think we should stay here. He came over and hugged her. Then let's go back to her parents, Julia laughed. It was funny for her to go back and forth today. Okay, we'll do it there, they agreed. When the young people entered Barry and Selena's apartment, they were surprised that they were going from one apartment to another. But when they explained that their apartment was being renovated, they were understood and were not kicked out. Selena didn't want to talk to anyone today. She went to her room and spent the rest of the evening there. During this time, Julia went to the show's website. She entered all the information to apply. When the form opened up to her, she began to type in the first name, last name, middle name, who she was looking for. The girl filled out the application on her mother's behalf. When it was finished, she hit the submit button. That's it. Now all that's left to do is wait. She turned to Anthony. Yes, and I hope it will happen very quickly, he was sure. Good if it does, she smiled with just her lips. After that, the young people went to bed. The girl thought that tomorrow she would already have some kind of answer. Even if it was negative, it was also a result. She pressed herself against Anthony. Only one day had passed, but today so many events had happened that it seemed to Julie that a whole week had passed. The morning is wiser, Anthony kissed her and they turned off the light. Julia couldn't sleep for a long time. She kept thinking about her grandmother, how she could keep this secret for so many years. And with these thoughts, she fell asleep. In her dream, she dreamt of the same Chang Fung. He was reaching out to her, asking for something. Julia woke up in tears. First thing in the morning, she went to the computer to see what was wrong with her application. Anthony, she screamed in a voice that didn't sound right. Why are you yelling? He jumped up from the bed. I got an answer. She stared at the monitor, unable to believe this was really happening. What did they say? He walked over to the monitor. The screen said they needed to contact the program editors. Julia didn't think long. She picked up her phone and dialed the number that was listed in the reply message. Hello, shouted the girl as soon as there was an answer on the other end. Did you apply? Began to speak in a monotone voice. Julia even thought it was a recording. Yes, I found an old photo album at my grandmother's house, and there are pictures of her and my mom, as well as her father, who no one knew about until yesterday. The girl spoke quickly. So, is everything on the application form correct? Asked her on the other end. Yes, she nodded her head, though it was unnecessary. We will check everything and get back to you, said goodbye to Julia, and she hung up. I don't believe it can all come out so quickly. She looked at her husband-to-be. Why not? He didn't understand. I don't know. The girl was worried. After that, they went to the kitchen to have breakfast. Their Selena started asking for details. If Julia couldn't sleep at night, and then she dreamed various things, Selena couldn't sleep at all that night. She kept wondering how her mother could do such a thing. Now they will figure it out, and then it will be clear what to do next, the daughter said. The apartment needed to be renovated. The wedding was scheduled for the end of summer. By this time, I wanted to finish everything. But the young people, or rather, Julia did not have a thought about repairs. All she could think about now was her mother and her father. Well, are you not going there again today? Anthony asked her. I will, there was nothing left for the girl to do. Then let's go, he was waiting for her. In her grandmother's apartment, the wallpaper had already been torn off. Now they had to prime the walls and they could glue new ones to the store. 
Anthony asked after the priming was finished. Isn't that enough for today? Julie asked. If you don't want to glue, then at least help you choose what to buy. He knew he couldn't handle it himself. Okay, let's go, she agreed. In the store they spent a good three hours, all could not decide on the type of wallpaper. Finally, they chose one that was sufficient in the warehouse and they both liked it. So they went home. Where have you been so long? Selena met them. First in the apartment and then in the store, Julia told her. Had you at least eaten? Her mother was worried. No, but believe me, it wasn't about that, Julia hugged the woman. It's okay, I don't think I'm as worried as you are, she told her daughter. It's okay. They walked to the kitchen, had something to eat, and then went to their room. What's up? Anthony looked at Julia. Nothing, she looked at the monitor. That's okay, he was undressing for bed. Yeah, I think so too, she admitted to him. So two weeks passed. During this time, young people, not without the help of parents, made repairs in one room. Of course, it was cosmetic, but it was enough. After a while, Julia got a phone call. Hello, she picked up the phone. Hello, have you contacted the program? They asked her. Yes, I'm looking for my grandfather and my mother for my father, she said. Okay, everything that was asked on your parameters, we checked. Now you need to take a DNA test. And only then we will invite you to the program, frustrated her editor. Great, when and where to come? Julia wondered. When everything was explained to her, she told her mother her presence was not necessary, but she still wanted to go. Mom, we need to buy tickets. They came home. It's mandatory, Selena. As much as she wanted to know the truth, she dreaded it. Please, so much work has already been done. Let's not back down, her daughter begged her. Okay, you're taken, agreed the mother. Two days later, they were already sitting at the airport, waiting for their flight. Are you nervous? Julia asked her mother. I won't say yes, but I can't say definite no. I can't say, the woman said, and didn't look at her daughter. They flew in by invitation, went into the lab, took all the necessary tests. If it turns out to be your father, well, he's still alive. So if you thought you were an orphan, you can forget about it, the lab technician told her. What are you talking about? How old is he now? Celine looked at him with big eyes. Asians are long-lived, he smiled. Selena and Julia went outside. They breathed in the fresh air. They had to fly home again. So what do you think? The mother asked her daughter. Let's not think anything. Just wait for the results. She didn't want to be nervous for a while. Okay, she agreed with her. They flew home quietly. Anthony and Julia went about the renovation of the apartment, and Barry and Selena went on with their normal lives. Time dragged by very slowly. For a period of time, Selena and her daughter even seemed to forget that they had an important case going on somewhere. They were distracted by renovations and wedding preparations. Do you think we'll pick out a dress here? The daughter said to her mom. I don't know, but can we at least look? Selena asked. Okay, they went to another store. But Julia didn't believe, not at all, that they would be able to find anything. They were measuring one wedding dress after another when the girl's phone rang. Hello, she put her finger to her lips, showing her mother to be quiet. Hello, did you apply to find a relative and take a DNA test? A male voice spoke up. Yes, you're right, glanced Julia at her mother. We invite you to the TV program that will be held in two weeks, said the same voice in the receiver. Thank you, we will definitely be there, disconnected Julia. And what, waited the mother for her verdict. They're inviting us, Julia smiled. They need a show, we are test subjects, said the woman. Why the negativity? The girl didn't understand. Well, why? Now on our television only so, was sure Selena. Okay, let it be so, but we'll still go, was sure Julia. Well, you started it, you decide whether we go or not, Selena said as if she didn't want to. That's great, the girl was happy. They got everything ready for the wedding. They bought tickets to Washington and now they just have to wait for the date they need to leave. If it turns out that he is your father and my grandfather, he will even make it to our wedding in time, Julia said. Yes, the woman agreed with her. And that day came, they arrived at the studio now sat and waited for their exit to be announced. The supposed relatives did not see each other, they were in different rooms. Julia was the first to be called into the studio and was asked what and how she had learned. 
She began her story with the fact that she was brought up with her grandmother, loved her more than anyone else on Selene. Then how she was passing away well and at the very end, how they came to the apartment and found the album. And you think your mother is the daughter of J and Ji Feng Wei? They asked her a question. Here, she handed them the album that belonged to her grandmother, you can see for yourself. Yes indeed, it seems to be true. The host flipped through the pages. So it is true, Julia almost cried. Well, at the end of the program it will be clear, it was obvious that the presenter was making a show out of it. Now Julia believed that there was no victor, that now their story would be told, and then they would say that they took a test, but it was negative. The girl sat on the couch, looked at the presenter, and waited to see what would happen next. Well, let's see a fragment from the life of our heroes, said the young man who hosted the show. On the screen the footage flashed, which was clearly not the US. Selena saw it too from the room where she was sitting. Tears came to Julia's eyes, had they really found the person who was in the pictures of her grandmother's album. Well, you'll recognize someone in these shots. The presenter looked at the picture and then shifted his gaze to Julia. She was silent because no one had been shown yet. She looked with all her eyes, but she didn't see anyone. Why would you say anything? The man who was in charge looked at her. I don't know what to say, she said honestly. Well, say something. Do you even believe that we found someone? He asked as if he was mocking her. Are you kidding me? She was ready to fall to the ground in shame. Why did she believe these people? They just wanted to make a show and they did. Why, no one is mocking, shrugged the presenter. He was looking at the screen as well as Julia. And at the same moment, an old man appeared on the screen. He was sitting on a bench near the house. And yes, he remotely resembled the one Julia had seen in the picture. The girl's heart beat faster, her hands shook. Did you recognize him? The host saw her excitement. I don't know, she was fiddling with her handkerchief. I think you recognize someone, the host sat down next to her. Is he here? The girl looked at him. Yes, he nodded and smiled, but we'll call your mother here first. The music started playing and Selena walked into the studio. Hello, the host said hello to her. Good evening, she sat down next to her daughter. Well, how do you feel? Did we find your father? Looked at her, who led the program. I don't know if Selena was ready to burst into tears, but I do know, Zhang Feng Wei, come here to the studio, he called out. No way, Julia clutched her face. We can do anything, miracles happen, everyone in the studio applauded. An elderly man came out here, he stood in front of Selena and Julia, he was crying. Daughter, forgive me, he said in broken Russian. Hello, naturally Selena did not perceive him in any way. So do you want to know if this is your father or not? Asked the host. Of course, everyone was in suspense. Then I invite an expert here in the studio. He put out his hand. A woman came out who was holding an envelope in her hands. She stood in the middle of the room and looked around. After that, she took out the results from the envelope. So the alleged father, Jang Fun Wei, and the alleged daughter, Celine, the possibility of parentage is, she stopped talking and looked at the people present. Come on, Julia stepped forward. 99 and 9%, applause erupted in the hall. Daughter, a man jumped up from his seat. I can't call you daddy. She stood up and walked over to him. They approached each other and embraced. The audience did not stop applauding. Julia sat looking at her mother and cried. So, what are you going to say now? The host came up to them. I can't tell you anything now. It was obvious that Selena was at a loss. Why did you find your father? The presenter asked her. I knew all my life that I didn't have one. And now I have one. And I'm just shocked. Selena looked at the man. He was holding her hand. Well, what do you think? He turned to Victor, as he was known here. I wasn't expecting it. He said, I was coming here for an internship and I met Olivia. We were only with her for a few months and then I moved back. I wrote to her, but she didn't answer me. All of this was told by a man with a heavy accent. So how come she didn't reply? Julia put in a word. Here, look at this. Chang Fung picked up the album and started flipping through it, tears flowing from his eyes. She must have misread my handwriting. So she misspelled the address, he said regretfully. That's it. Now you know you have a daughter. And you know you have a father. How do you feel about it? The presenter continued his show. Incomprehensibly, Selena looked at him, 
She wanted to leave the studio sooner. Outside in the car, her husband was waiting for her along with Anthony. They said goodbye to everyone, got up, and walked out of the studio. When they were outside, Selena called her father into the car. I didn't come alone, he said. Who did you come with? Julia became agitated. My children and grandchildren are with me, just like you. We all came together, he said. And where are you staying? Selena asked. In a hotel, he answered. So let's go there quickly. The women couldn't wait to see their relatives. Together they drove to the hotel, and when they entered the room, their eyes became a little bigger than they were. It turned out that Selena's father had six children of his own, and they had several grown children of their own. Wow, that's a lot of family, Julia said. That's not all, there are still relatives back home. Chan Feng's children and grandchildren did not speak Russian, so they had to communicate through their grandfather. But even so, the relatives understood each other. I insist that you come to Lestasith, Selena. She had lived with her mother, her husband, her daughter, and her mother-in-law, and no other relatives. And here, it turns out, she has a very large extended family. Children, do you mind? Grandpa turned to his family. Of course not, answered the oldest son, who could speak a little Russian. Together they booked tickets and drove to the town where Selena, Barry, and Julia lived. Natalie was invited to visit, as well as Selena's mother-in-law. All the extended family couldn't even fit in one apartment. And I want to tell you that you are just in time for our wedding, Julia told them. In a week's time there was going to be a celebration, and everyone who was here was invited. The week passed very quickly, and now Anthony and Julia stood before the registrar, and she asked them if they agreed to become husband and wife to each other. The young ones said yes, and then they exchanged rings. Next, everyone got into their cars and the fun began. First, they went to take pictures, then they went to the restaurant. Not a single person left the wedding. Everyone congratulated the newlyweds. Julia looked at all the relatives and could not believe that now she has so many relatives. How are you feeling? The newlyweds came home. Very well, she told her husband. They had arrived home and now they wanted to discuss how everything had gone. The relatives were housed partly at Selena's, partly at the hotel. You know, Anthony, I am the happiest woman on Selene, she looked at her husband. And I'm happy because you're happy, he hugged her. You can imagine I lived for 20 years without one relative. I had a mom, dad, grandmother, and even then one died. And now, look how many relatives I have, but they are not to embrace, rejoiced Julia. The newlyweds talked a little more and went to bed. Tomorrow. They began a real adult life. In the morning, they went to their mother's house and other relatives came up there too. They sat at the table for a while and then went to see the relatives off. At the airport, they all agreed that they would meet exactly one year later. But during that year, they would return phone calls and emails. I'm so happy to have you, Julia hugged everyone. And we're so glad, granddaughter, said her grandfather. When the plane left, everyone got in the car and drove home. I still can't believe that I have a father and so many brothers, nephews and grandnephews, Selena said. What can you do? You have to believe, her daughter hugged her. And it's all thanks to you, my sweetheart, her mom hugged her. Imagine how it happens in life, you have no one, and then one day in a whole family, Julia herself has not yet in her head that all these relatives appeared to her. Why did you take that picture? Mom was complaining about her daughter changing her grandmother's apartment. You know how much I loved her, I just wanted to change everything so it would be different, she told her. Yeah, if that hadn't happened, we wouldn't have found anyone. Selena shook her head. After that everyone went home, Julia had to get a job. Anthony had already found a place too. They were all happy. Not six months later, Julia fell sick. You're pregnant? Her husband immediately looked at her. Why did you immediately think I was pregnant? It was just dizziness. She was a little scared. I really want you to be pregnant, her husband looked at her. The next day, Julia went to the doctor. At first, she wanted to buy a test, but then she decided that the doctor would have a 100% result. Who's last in line to get pregnant? She asked in the hallway. One of the women answered her. She took the line sack and wondered how she would get into the office. And when she entered and sat down in front of the doctor, he looked at her through his glasses and asked her what she was complaining about. I'm pregnant, she told him. 
The delay, the test, how did you know that? He asked her. I just know, that's all. Julia felt like an idiot now. Okay, come to the chair and let's see, said the gynecologist. The girl undressed, climbed on the chair. The doctor began the examination. While he frowned his eyebrows, moved his lips. And when all finished, he went to the table and began to write. Doctor, what is it? She asked him. I'm afraid to be wrong, but I think you have a uterine myoma. He looked at her over his glasses. I don't understand. The patient looked at him. And what is not clear, I write you a referral to ultrasound. Only there you can determine whether your diagnosis is confirmed or not. He handed her a paper. How likely are you to be right? She was wondering. I can't answer your question. He was taking notes. Okay, thank you. The girl wanted to cry. She took the referral, went home. What's wrong with you? She went to her mother. Look, she handed her a paper. What's this? Mom started reading it. Here, I thought I was pregnant, Julia said. What do you think? She waited for her mom to tell her. We have to go for an ultrasound, she told her. No, Julia didn't want to know there was something wrong. Well, your problems think. But sooner or later you'll have to go, Selena was sure of it. Oh, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Julia didn't want to bring it up. Why did you come to me then? Selena didn't understand. Just show. The daughter got up from the table and headed for the exit. Think, it's your life and your health, her mother said in her back. Good, she didn't even turn around. The girl walked home. She didn't look around, only at her feet. When she got home, she was greeted by Anthony. Well, what did the doctor tell you? He asked her. Nothing, not pregnant. She wouldn't tell him anything. Okay, why are you so crazy? He followed her. Don't go, please, she asked him. Okay, but can you tell me why you're so upset? He was interrogating her. Look in your purse, she told him. Now Anthony returned to the hallway. He took the report out of her purse, read it, went to the bedroom where Julia was. What do you think? She looked up at him. If you don't want to be examined, don't go. Anthony put his arm around his wife. Okay, she lay face down on the pillow and cried. What if it's true? He hugged her. And if it wasn't, she was impenetrable. I think we should go for an ultrasound and then suffer. Anthony told her he didn't want to hurt his wife. He even felt sorry for her. But walking around in ignorance wasn't good either. Anthony understand. I will not go to the operation, she told him. Who said anything about surgery? He didn't understand. You understand, if the ultrasound diagnosed that I have a myoma, then it will be necessary to go to surgery, she was sure of it. Well, let's wait a little, he agreed with her. And let's go to Korea, to my grandfather, she told him. Are you sure about that? He was just shocked at what she was suggesting. Of course I'm sure, she looked at him. Not two weeks later, Anthony and Julia were sitting in the airport, waiting to board their flight. Did you at least give them a heads up? Anthony asked her. Of course, we wouldn't have gone without it. I even called my mom with me, but she didn't agree. Julia told him she was very sad. Well, well, promise me when we get there, you'll go to the ultrasound. It was very important to him. Okay, I will definitely go to the ultrasound, but only when I decide and tune in, she told him and kissed him on the cheek. They flew to the relatives. They were met. Everything was as good as it could be. Grandpa who had recently found a granddaughter, a daughter, a son-in-law, and all the other relatives, was very happy about it. Naturally, no one told him about his granddaughter's illness, but he didn't need to know. Anthony and Julia stayed there for exactly a week, then they came back. He went straight to work, and she was hesitant and couldn't get in the mood to go for an ultrasound. It had been almost three months since that appointment when she got the referral, and Julia was in the mood. She made an appointment for an ultrasound. She arrived, got in line. Who's last in line? She asked. What are you in for? She was asked by visitors who were already here. On pregnancy, she said, and let that she lied, but so that no one knew and did not pity her. Then you'll follow me, said one of the women. It turned out that that woman was second in line, and when she passed, Julia let two people go ahead of her. She was afraid to hear the diagnosis. But when there was no one left in the hallway and the girl lab technician came out and invited her into the office, there was nothing left to do but go in. Julia lay down on the couch. The doctor took her referral. She read it. 
curled her lips and began to look. The woman who was doing the ultrasound, her name was Leslie, after a moment she smiled and said, Girl, I congratulate you, you are pregnant, you are 18 weeks. After that she smiled for a long time. Julia cried. Why are you crying? The woman who did the ultrasound asked her. Did you see what my diagnosis was? She told her about the referral. How can a doctor make a diagnosis without an ultrasound? Leslie didn't understand. That diagnosis was in doubt, and I'm telling you you're pregnant. She looked at her and smiled. Julia's mood immediately lifted. What am I supposed to do now? She was being silly. Go and get registered, Leslie told her. Okay, I hear you. Julia got up off the couch. I wish you happiness, the doctor looked at her. Thank you, the girl was grateful to her. She drove home, and inside everything was blooming and smelling. Julia couldn't wait to tell her husband and mom that they would soon become a grandmother and father. Hello, my love. She entered the apartment. Honey? He looked at her questioningly. Yes, she nodded her head. Yes, what? Anthony didn't understand. You're going to be a daddy soon. She walked up to him and kissed him. Love, I'm happy. He jumped up, hugged her and kissed her. We have to tell mom she was crying. Why are you crying? He didn't understand. I'm happy, she told her husband. And I'm happy he spun her around. They packed up and drove first to Julia's parents' house. Mommy, I'm pregnant. You're going to be a grandmother soon, she told her. My darling, I'm so happy for you. She hugged her son-in-law and daughter. And I am so happy that this myoma has turned into a child. The girl rejoiced. We need to tell the grandparents, although this word was unfamiliar to them, but they were saying it now. Julia started calling her second grandmother first, the one who cried as soon as she heard the news. And then the call was to her grandfather, who first laughed and then cried. I will definitely come to the birth, he promised, listening. But what if we have a Korean baby? Anthony suddenly realized. So what? She looked at him. No, nothing now, he winked at her. What do you mean? She didn't understand his answer. They drove home, hailed the cab, got in it, held hands. What did you mean? She hinted at what he'd said about the Korean kid. No, imagine what would have happened if we hadn't found out your grandfather was Korean, he laughed. What would have happened? She didn't know what he meant. Imagine, I come to the hospital and two Russian people have a baby born narrow-eyed and black-haired, he said. Yes, so what? You wouldn't believe me, she wondered. Anything is possible, they taught. It turns out you don't believe me, she removed her hand from his arm. You misunderstand me, he wanted to take it back. No, Julia got out of the car. Darling, wait, think about it. It's true, he was catching up with her. I don't know, she went into the driveway. The next day, Julia went to the gynecology clinic, got registered. Now she started her follow-up. About the conversation with her husband, she did not forget. The girl began to read literature. It turned out that her husband was right. National peculiarities are always manifested only after a generation. Now she understood what Anthony meant. I'm sorry, she was already seven months pregnant. For what? He didn't remember anything. I realize now that you were right then, she hugged him. I love you, he kissed her. And I love you. She couldn't believe things could be so good. When Julia was seven months pregnant, she was admitted to the hospital. She didn't refuse because she wanted her baby to be born healthy. An IV, a nurse came into the room. Good, Julia smiled towards her. Oh, what an unusual appearance you have, the girl looked at her. Yes, my grandfather is Korean, Julia said it as if she was proud of it. That's exotic, the girl told her. That's proud, he worked in our town in a factory as a chief engineer, she bragged. You're a smart girl for having such an opinion about your grandfather, now the girl was already proud of her patient. For two whole months, Julia was lying in labor, but she did not regret it, as long as all was well with the child. When it all started, she was taken to the prenatal ward. The fetus is large, the head nurse warned her. And what to do? The girl wrinkled her nose in pain. Now the doctor will come and tell you everything, she said. For now, they only supported the flow of labor. Breathe, breathe. The doctor shouted at her. I can't, she cried, it hurts. Everything will be fine, he tried, but nothing worked. To be on the safe side, the gynecologist told Julia to go to surgery. 
There she was given anesthesia and the surgery began. I don't feel well, she screamed. Be patient, sister, the surgeon and the gynecologist appealed to her. When the baby was taken out of the mother's body, the doctor looked at it for a long time. He saw her husband come to her. He was definitely not a Kazakh, not a gypsy or anything else. He was definitely Russian. Julia, are you sure you won't have any problems with your husband? He showed her the child. My favorite, Maximka, she said, and turned her head to the right. So you didn't answer my question. He waited. What could be the problem? She didn't understand. Your child clearly doesn't look Russian, he said bluntly. Because my grandfather is Korean, she smiled, though she felt bad. Now everything is clear, he handed the child to the pediatrician. After that, she was moved to a room, and then the baby was moved there. A couple hours later, Anthony came in. Where's my son? He was standing under the window. Now Julia got up. And my grandson, the girl heard him. Wait, she was in pain, but she was ready to show this child to everyone. Grandpa said he would come when you were released from the hospital, said a happy Selena. I love you all, she put her hand to the window. Three days later, Julia and the baby were discharged. When they left the hospital, they were greeted by Grandpa Victor with flowers.